happier place to be. I won't cry miracle. The maple syrup is the best. It's so yeah. good, though. I won't cry. Just be present with me and love me. I won't cry miracle. Wow. 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 You're going to think you're going to read this book about this kid who did a spell to meet Taylor Swift, but you're actually going to learn real fucking magic and you're going to learn real practical, applicable tools for your life. Okay, guys, welcome back to the Grand America Show. Uh, we are going to be chatting with Alex Kazemi a little bit later. Uh, I, th- I believe this is a little bonus episode that we're going to drop for you guys. We were going to have it come out last Friday. We decided to wait and drop the swap cast with the Jindo on Friday so we could have this come out today. Same day as Alex's book. And you guys get a little extra podcast this week. Isn't that nice? Uh, and we got everybody's favorite podcaster over here. Graham, Red Light Dunlop. How's it going? Good. How you doing, buddy? So have, you got, have you got any red light tickets yet? Uh, nope. Hmm. I'm wondering if the red light will. Yeah, yeah. You know what's Manifest interesting? some tickets. I came out, I got uh, two speeding tickets. Three, technically. Wow. If you count the one I got in the work truck. Yep. I got three I know, speeding it's tickets. Tough, man, I'm telling you, it's not easy. All in the span of like three days. Yeah. Holy shit. Two of them are on the same day. Wow. What the f- so they gave me a ticket up by Natasha's house and then crossing 68th or crossing do, Garden. You, that place you used to I always know, complain I'm about getting you, the tickets. Right. It's very, cause it goes from 110 to 70 yeah. in a matter of, you know, miles, a couple miles, a couple mile. kilometers. Yeah. Maybe a kilometer and it goes from 110 to 70, which doesn't sound okay. Yeah, but, but you're on a freeway. <laughs> We're on a highway. You're doing, it's all not you're a freeway, doing, it's a highway. All you're doing is crossing a light. Yeah. And it's it drops down. Is it below 70 or something? No, it's 70. Yeah. But if you're going like 78, they might ticket you. It's terrible. It's really, this is really brutal. Or do you have to be over 10? Over I was doing 88 oh, in wow, a 70. You're we flying through there. Yeah, 140 yeah. bucks. Yeah. I must it's have been it's tough, man. It's tough. I, I drive the speed limit around town all the time. I'll speed on the open roads for sure. I drive around the speed limit and people fly by me and then they get all pissed off because I'm going the speed limit. And I'm like, look, dude, like I've got enough fucking tickets in this city. I'm not speeding around the city. Totally. But there's all these people flying around. I'm like, how does everybody get away with flying around the city? Well, it goes in, it's like cycles. cycles? Yeah. Because yeah. it seems like I could fly around forever, get no tickets, and then three tickets in one week. But I'll tell you what bugs me more is if I'm going to rant about this stuff. Is I was gonna put the, the rat crime. jingle on here too. You know, is the crime is not getting punished for real <coughs> people want to steal your property and break into your cars and do all that, and they're just let go and because they're out there catching us speeders. You know, for going twelve over the speed limit. There is. I a, got one in the little forty zone. I was gonna go and I I was I went out and I'm like, there's no way this is thirty kilometers. It's forty posted everywhere, all the way down Elbow Drive there, right? So I went down there, thirty, looking, 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 looking. They have a special little sign, the school zone sign, <coughs> with 30 in it. And I'm looking at the hours. You can hardly read the hours on it. Till 9 p.m. at night. That's a playground, then, not a school. Playground. <laughs> it's bullshit. It's 30 the whole way. But, but they're within the 40. So everybody thinks it's 40. And there's a van that hides there and takes your fucking picture. You know, I was thinking the other day. And I day, was going to write in and say. I was like, I wonder what the daily revenue is for those photo radar tickets. Because they dinged me, that was like 300 bucks in one day. And the thing is, you, you don't pay it until it's time to get your night license renewed, and then they they hose you. They Last got time you. I did it, I thought I was good. You pay the late fee. Was like, no. No, she's like, that'd be $900, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> How can that be? And she's like, you got all these parking tickets. Parking? Wow. It was parking tickets that got me. And I was like, no, nah, that's got to be a mistake. I was like, I just paid those parking tickets. Like... Last month, oh, those, I, those aren't in Park then, right? They're the other company. They're the, the city. Park of Plus. Park Plus. Oh, they they're connected to your license. 
They're connected How to your they license. Do that? Yeah. And I had just, so I'd went in and I had uh, renewed my license a few months before. And it cost me like 400 bucks because I had these parking tickets. And I'm like, no, lady, I just paid those parking tickets. You're mistaken. And she's like, well, I don't know what to tell you. And I was like, well, I'll go get the proof. So then I went and I forgot I couldn't find any proof. Then I went to the other registry in Chestermere and they were like, oh no, these are different parking tickets for sure. <laughs> Those three more parking tickets, a hundred dollars a piece, oh. a speeding ticket and something else. Well, yeah. Yeah. It adds up quick. Adds I, up I don't pay for parking in the city. I just take the ticket. I just pay for the ticket because it's cheaper than paying for parking every time. I mean, I got to park in the city for five minutes here, <laughs> five minutes there all the time. So I just Until take Until you chance. renew your license. <laughs> No, I no, because I don't think you get. I had the wrong license plate on my parking app for a year, and I only got two tickets. Oh, that's a good idea. It's not a defense. I tried. Yeah. Yeah. I got Impark to wave a couple, but then even by the end, when I sent it to Donna, she's like, "The lady at Impark flat out said she's not reversing any more of your parking tickets." <laughs> <laughs> so, Anyways, enough about us. Enough. I of mean, this honestly, parking. this. This pop you mentioned, you didn't mention the name of Alex's book coming out, Pop Magic. It was well, a did, great chat with him. The book. He's from Van- Vancouver. It was a great chat. Oh, yeah, Pop Magic. Yeah. yeah, like a spin on pop culture. Yeah. Alex is great. We got along great. Yeah. I see me and Alex hanging out in the future for it's some a, reason. It's a book I want to order. Like, you know, he's the type of guy that could come on a CAC on a weekend and do workshops. I want to do a couple of manifestation, like magical practice, practical magic, I should say, a workshop maybe with maybe Ooh, with he him could, we and, could do that at the and somebody him. else, right? Yeah, he's pretty close. He's probably, he's probably only four probably hours closer than us. Guaranteed. Know? So anyways, and it's not a commune, it's Grimera Camp. Who came up with that? I did. Oh, so I just and go when with when I it? did. No, because it's oh. all tied into synchronicities. Like, okay. I go to the chat. The chats are like synchro sauce right now. Every time I go in the chats, it's manifesting synchro synchronicities. Oh, I got to say. Listen, so. No, 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 no. <laughs> When I came up with the name Grimera Camp in my head, I looked in the chat. Came up with? <laughs> what do you mean? Was that like a brainstorming session? Or? I looked in the chats. Grimera Camp. <laughs> Justice Truffaut had just written camp in the chats, and that's the first word I looked at. It was camp? Yeah. Well, you're already thinking camp, Grimera Camp. I like the don't Moai you, synchro don't better. Get, don't you get nah, the, that's a shitty synchro. The Moai synchro is great. Do you want me to continue on with some other chat ones? All right. Yeah. See if you can woo me. I type, somebody's looking for one of our past episodes. People are mentioning. Is that the one I people. tagged you for? Yeah. And the yeah. people are, I'm like, you guys are way off track. I'm like, it's probably either, did I say Greg Joe Goyle? Roop, I think is who it turned out to be. Really? Was yeah. it Joe? Wow. After somebody mentioned that, I'm like, damn, that could have been Joe. But I was like, maybe Anthony Peak. Maybe uh, Greg Doyle, and then people are bringing up Stuart Hammerhoff and some I more got scientific So types. I just typed in uh, quantum physicist into the app. <laughs> 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 Whoever's N- name Amiga came up. Swami was yeah, in he was the top name I put in. So anyways, my two were, I wrote Only in. Only possibilities. I wrote in Anthony Peake. The next day I get an email from him. Haven't heard from him in years. That's a pretty good one. This is all happening in the last couple of days, by the way. This is all like very recent synchronicities. Well, you know what's interesting is to talk about synchronicities. So like I could count on one hand the amount of show sponsors we've had offered to sponsor us in the last couple of years. Not a lot. And we had two. We've had to politely decline. Yeah. We, we got two. In two days? In two days. Yeah. Recently. Recently. Which we'll probably have to politely decline, but it's going to be harder because these are way more close to home hitting products. One's, yeah, one's still, supplements and one's yeah, mushrooms. Yeah. Anyway, we took our vow of poverty. <laughs> yeah. That, we'll get into the support segment of the intro yeah. later, but so I got more synchros. I mean, or do you want to go ahead with your little chat that? synchro? So. I, I, again, it's weird. I'm, so I'm reading this book, this thick book at home, preparing for a show. And I think about the word I just read. I'm like, that's a, I don't know why, you know how sometimes a word just sticks, sticks in your car a little bit. I go into this chat. The first thing I look at in the chat, it's from, uh, T-bone shuffle. No, it's harmonious light. Three, three, three types in the chat. Episode 297, 9952. Magenta pixie uses the word deluge. 
moments after I spark one of these up. And it's a little doobie with a sticker Deluge on it. Baby oh, nice. He's plowing that through was Mr. the word nice that right I had just that was the word that I had just read before I read that right. in the in the book I was reading. I've been talking to so him. So I lately. said to him, so I said to him, I said, Harmonious Light, I can can I add to that? Just read the word deluge seconds before going to Discord directly to your post. Crazy stuff. Um, this one's and gonna he remember says, when you read that fucking book says, at Dave Wilcox, you just had all these Sid Grows every day. <laughs> That's when you had all the Cox and Grows. Mike Hawk. Yeah. And then he, he responded, wild, I happen to be listening to the intro of app 318 when you tagged me, LOL. So they go on, they're compound. Compound. I've been talking to, uh, let me see here, I've been talking to Mr. Harmonious Light today about, where are we? About he's been busted into no more Mr. Nice Guy. So he messaged me to say, uh, Sending me some good vibes. Just started reading No More Mr. Nice Guy. Thanks to our interview with Dr. Glover. Very excited to embark on the journey and recovery and have Grimerica to thank for that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So what about the Moai Cinco? I think that's a good one. He, I mean, I, can't, I still can't believe I think you're pulling my leg on it. I don't even know who lives so there. So we're driving around the old city where the studio, well, it's a little town. What's well, a city, technically? Yeah, driving around with Maria, my girlfriend. 16,000 people. Looking at the neighborhood, maybe checking out where we might move to eventually. And uh, I, I said, well, I'll, I'll drive her past where the studio, the first old house that you used to live in, where the studio, the Grand American Studio, I think that was our first place in there. Yeah, that first a, little the first spot episodes in that room. Were... And I'm like, look, that's the house that the studio was in. And there's a Moai on the front, the only thing on the front of the house is a Moai, like it's probably about a foot and a half tall. I'm like, that's strange. Was that always there? No. So I take the picture and I send it to you and you're like, no. I mean, how can be? That's crazy. That's crazy. Because it's like literally right behind. There's no other Moais around. Like if you could carry a line straight through from your picture through that Moai, it would like line up with where the computer desk was sitting when I recorded the first episode. Wow. With E-Frame Palermo, because we had to be in different locations. And it was late at night, because he was in Pacific. So we were starting at like 10 p.m. our time, I think. So everyone was in bed. I was on that computer right behind that Moai, recording the app. Wow. That's crazy. That's where we made, that's where I developed the web page, everything, all that shit was all in that house. And now there's a giant Moai there. Yeah. So And just think about that, when we were making all that stuff, we didn't even, hadn't even adopted the Moai yet. Crazy. Uh, but we adopted yes, we the had. Moai before we moved out of there. No, no, we had adopted the Moai right away. No, we didn't adopt the Moai until the podcast came out. What? What, what are you talking about? We make well, we made the then? website and everything in 2012. Yeah, but that was... <coughs> December 21st. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah, the Moai came along when the podcast came out, and I yeah. want to say the first 30 episodes were recorded in that house. Is that it? Yeah, Tough maybe. to say. No, it was more than that. I know we did Terry Tabandos in there for sure. What episode number was that? Because we moved before when Cassandra was young. Cassandra was born in 2013. So I would say March or April. Within two years. By 2015, we had moved for sure. Anyway, yeah. Uh, number two. Oh, 241. That doesn't make sense. That does not make sense. It was uh, Terry Tabando? May it Terry was Tabando. 2014. 2014. Terry Tabando? Yeah. The first one? Yeah. April 3rd, 2014. And that was in the original house? Yeah. That's crazy. 2013? So no, 2014. So we were there for a full year? Yeah. That's hard to believe, actually. No, we couldn't have been. Yeah, sure, we could have. A year there, then another two years in the basement of the old place. The next place. Then a couple years in the garage. Nah, that's crazy to think that. <coughs> then three years in the garage and then here for yeah. a year. Yeah. I mean, we've been here for like 15 months already. Yeah. 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 Anyway, sorry to just, uh, you know, get all off track there. Reminisce. People can always, if they don't want to hear our lazy ramblings, they can always fast forward to the episode. Yeah. Timestamps always in the show notes. Yep. Totes. It's usually about 45 minutes or so where we get people involved, chat about stuff. So what do you want to go to next? 
What do you got? Well, let's stick on this topic. I've got, uh, let's call this part of my operation project, project operation segment. Which we need a jingle for. Which we need a jingle for. We should just go We could fiver it. Yeah, let's go. Interestingly enough, I was talking to someone else today where Greg, where the girl that sings the THC jingles. Oh, yeah. If anyone can track her down. And I said, yeah, she's on Fiverr. (laughs) (laughs) I know this because she made the uh, Grand America's Funniest Home Videos jingle. So I'm trying to pick ones appropriate to this episode. This is one I've had, we were going to read sort of in the black budget feed, but I kept it here. So this is a resolution. House Resolution 642 in the U.S. (coughs) In the House of Representatives from March 14th, 2016. Recognizing magic as a rare and valuable art form and national treasure. Did you know? No. That sounds like an art project. Whereas magic is an art form with the unique power and potential to impact the lives of all people. Whereas magic enables people to experience the impossible. Whereas magic is used to inspire and bring wonder and happiness to others. Whereas magic has a significant impact on other art forms. Whereas magic, like the great art forms of dance, literature, theater, film, and the visual arts, allows people to experience something that transcends the written word. Whereas many technological advances can be directly traced to the influential work of magicians. Whereas futurist Arthur C. Clarke claimed that anything sufficiently, any advanced Sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. So it goes on and on. I mean, it, it's it's quite a bit. What goes oh, on and such on? As what is project this? Magic. How is this an object project operation? It's the government recognizing magic. That's pretty important. Is it? Don't you think? Maybe. Let me hear some more. Well, it Why goes do they on all have on. whereas in front I, of them? That's the way a resolution is, right? Whereas, 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 all the lines, right? A resolution. Yeah. Like a New Year's the government, resolution? In the House of Representatives, like it's a, a resolution. Like okay. A, like a 114th Congress, 2D session. Whereas, this would be something we have to ask Jen Briney when she comes on. Yeah, maybe. So it gets into the traditional magic. Are you going to be sick that day? Yeah, I'm going to call it sick that day. <laughs> <laughs> Darren can handle it. I'll bring Michael can come and back me up. Uh, they talk about David Copperfield and some of that traditional magic stuff in here. Are we calling David Copperfield traditional magic now? Not true. Yeah, well, you know, not mainstream. traditional, but mainstream. Or what about, what's the other guy's name? He ended, he ended up getting me too Really? David Blaine. Oh, David Blaine, yeah. I thought he got me too didn't he? I don't know. I'll find out. So, you keep going. So whereas magic has not been properly recognized as a great American art form, nor has it been accorded the institutional status on a national level commensurate with its value and importance. Whereas there is not an effective national effort to support and preserve magic. Whereas documentation and archival support required by such a great art form has yet to be systematically applied to the field of magic. And where it, whereas it is in the best interest of the national welfare to preserve and celebrate the unique art form of magic. Now, this is the end. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the House of Representatives, number one, recognizes magic as a rare and valuable art form and national treasure. And number two, supports efforts to make certain that magic is preserved, understood and promulgated. Nice. That'll be in the show notes. Perfect. And that was, that was in March. 20, this year? 2016. That was pre-Trump. <laughs> Barely. Barely. Magician Jeez. David Blaine under, under investigation for sexual assault. That oh, sucks. That does suck. All the best magicians end up getting rapey. You know, that guy did always That's sort terrible. of, he you always just sort that. of rubbed take me the wrong way. way. All right, I take it back. It does sort of happen though. Didn't Copperfield have some demons in his closet too? I don't know. I don't want to get into all that. All right. Speculating on David Blaine did always kind of rub me the wrong way. I remember like watching his show back in the day. I was like, this guy's a creep. Really? eh? Yeah. They're they're incredible though. I mean, they are incredible. 
The illusionists? Yeah. That's a better way to describe them. Yeah. Illusionists. Not the real magicians. Definitely not the real magicians. Alex Kazami is a real magician. Totally. Total real magician. I can't wait to buy his book. It's coming out today on the 18th. That's why we sort of pushed this episode back a little bit because we thought, hey, we can line up right with his date. But this is the one I want in the house, you know, that I can reference, you know? This is like one of those ones you can flip through the chapters, <laughs> all the succinct chapters and get practical on how so to So it's like uh, the Octopus of Global Control. It's more of a, a handbook. Well, no, it's not the same. This this is more like, you know, quotes and how the deep state is the octopus of global control. That one's more of a practical guide to different types of magic. So I got another. So part two of the Operation Project Project Operation is one that is not named, I don't think. I don't think there's, but you'll you'll, you'll find this one interesting. This has been, uh, I don't think there was an actual project and I don't know why. But this is an interesting one. You mean there was a project, but the operation wasn't carried out? (laughs) (laughs) No, the operation was, but there wasn't a project. Well, that's just like... That's, that's... Declassified docs show CIA poisoned entire town with LSD and massive mind control experiment. Most people have probably heard of this one by now. This is a few years old. For decades after a French village was struck by a mass insanity and hallucinations in 1951, it was widely believed that a local bakery's flour had become contaminated by ergot, a poisonous fungus that occurs naturally on rye and causes hallucinations. However, a discovery by an investigative journalist doing research for a book about the incident uncovered damning evidence that the village village's food was intentionally contaminated with LSD as part of a secret CIA mind control experiment. Can you Jesus. imagine going to other countries to do this? Like well, you've heard about most those places in that would be considered acts of war. <clears throat> On August 16th, 1951, numerous locals were suddenly stricken with horrifying hallucinations of fire, dragons, and snakes with dozens being committed to asylums and hundreds left with various degrees of madness. The incident was locally known as the, so this mystery of Le Pain Maudet, Maudit, Maudit, Cursed Bread. Time Magazine wrote at the time, among the stricken delirium rose, patients thrashed wildly on their beds, screaming that red flowers were blossoming from their bodies, that their heads had turned to molten lead. A local postman at the time, Leon Armunier, was doing his rounds in the town of Point Saint Esprit when he was suddenly overcome by a feeling of nausea and wild hallucinations. It was terrible. I had the sensation of shrinking and shrinking. Nobody the there fire. had like any experience that they could be like, and whoa, this, man. I, no, because this think is I'm back, on acid. Dude, this is back in 51, right? Huh. 1951. What when country? Was Hoffman even? In France. What a bunch of scumbags. Yeah. So there's more accounts of it. I don't think we need to read all the accounts on it. I can skip ahead here. Mr. Alberelli came across the CIA documents while investigating the susp- suspicious suicide of Frank Olson, a biochemist working for the sod who fell from a 13th floor window two years after the cursed bread incident. One note transcribes a conversation between a CIA agent and a Sandoz official who mentions the secret of Point Saint Esprit and explains that it was not at all caused by mold, but by diethem... What's the D in LSD? Diethemide? I don't know. Diethemide, the D in LSD. Dimethyl? That's in... Diethylamide. Diethylamide? Dimethyltryptyline? That's DMT. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is LSD. This is the D in... It's a different D. Different D? I think it is. Still sounds like a fun D. <laughs> Further research revealed that F. Olson, according to the BBC, was Frank Olson, a scientist that had spearheaded research into LSD for the CIA. While Belin was a reference to David Belin, who was executive director of the Rockefeller Commission created by the White House in 75 to investigate abuses carried out worldwide by the CIA. Oof. There you have it. According to the BBC report... It is well known that biological warfare scientists around the world, including some in Britain, were experimenting with LSD in the early 50s, a time of conflict in Korea and an escalation of Cold War tensions. 
Alberelli says he found a top secret report issued in 1949 by the researcher directed of the Edgewood Arsenal, where many U.S. government LSD experiments were carried out, which states that the Army should do everything possible to launch field experiments using the drug. Using the Freedom of Information legislation, he also got a hold of another CIA report from 1954. And an agent reported his conversation with a representative of Sandoz Chemical Company in Switzerland. Sandoz's base, which was just a few hundred kilometers from Pont Saint Esprit, was the only place where LSD was being produced at that time. The agent reports that after several drinks, the Sandoz rep abruptly stated, The Pont Saint Esprit secret is that it was not the bread at all. It was not grain ergot. Ergot. There's a bunch of LSD. So in, a, in his book, A Terrible Mistake, The Murder of Frank <clears throat> Olson and the CIA's Secret Cold War Experiments, Al Borelli explains that he had spoken to the former co-workers of Frank Olson who had told him that the Pont Saint Esprit incident was just part of a variety of mind control experiments that had been carried out by the CIA. One mystery that remains, according to Al Borelli, is whether French authorities were aware of the actual cause of the incident. Whether the French government was aware or not, those affected by the CIA experiment have the right to know what actually happened and why they were used as test subjects for an experiment of this nature without consent. I would tend to agree. Please share this harrowing story of innocent civilians being used as unwitting test subjects. That's from the freethoughtproject.com. I'll copy it and put it in the show notes right now. Right on. Interesting stuff. Sounds fucking criminal. <clears throat> bingo, bingo, social media jingle. Don't forget to rate, comment, and or subscribe to the Grime America newsletter. All right, we'll start by going to the text line. What have you got on the text? Yo, dudes, my name's Kevin, and you guys rock. I live in Edmonton, so I just want to say you two make Alberta and Canada fucking proud. Aw, thanks, buddy. Come down and visit us in the studio one day. Yeah. Ah, uh, here we go. Sound is good. I couldn't find the YouTube comments. Hmm. All right. Uh, here's another pic of a dead fish. And a little girl fishing for the dead fish. Oh, that's cute. Oh, wow. Yeah. Creepy. A little creepy. Cute little girl, though. I think it's a little girl. Uh, heard you got a pick of a dead fish. Hope you like this one of my youngest son better. Damn it. That's a nice little boy. Damn it. <laughs> Is that you or the him? That was him. I'm sorry. I thought he was a girl. I just seen the blonde hair and the picture was kind of small. It's a cute boy you got there. Nice dead fish. There's another, that's the dead fish from last time. Uh, and that's all I got from the chat line. We do have a couple of voicemails. Check those next. What do you think is going to be on the voicemail this week? I don't know. Could be that troll again. Which one? I'm just kidding. For personal options, you have no unheard messages. Oh, there you oh go. well, we have no messages. There you go. Never mind. So leave a voicemail at uh, 403 702. What is it? 6803? 403 702 6083. 6083. You can text us. You can leave us a voicemail. I don't know what the voicemail message says on there. But uh, you can do that. Okay, we got uh, on the 400, show 400, Colin Spectacular from the YouTubes. I love this picture. It reminds me of wet, hot American summer, one of the funniest scenes I have ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> that's the two Moais fighting over the phone for the call-in show. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, on number 402 from Daniel Hay, this had the potential for a good interview if those two dimwits weren't interrupting every two yeah. seconds <laughs> who's it us yeah we must be the dimwits who else could it be well maybe the guy calling in to troll remember no this was on the 402 episode. oh 402 
Swap cast with the Jindo. Fabulous show, guys. Shame Graham couldn't be on, but Darren did you proud. Looks like I got another podcast to listen to the back catalog now. I think you're confused. Graham was in that show. He was not in the Snake Bros swap cast. Hey, guys, love your podcast. Graham, you should look into the box saga. I just read the introduction into the saga. It's about the earliest oral history of mankind and its journey of procreation. Anyhow, be good and be well. Oh, the box saga will blow your mind. Yes, I've watched the first five or no, the first six videos are back to Lucan Nymum. Lucan Nymum. Is that all Norwegian sort of stuff? It's Finnish, I believe. Is it? Yeah, not Norwegian. Um, <clears throat> and they wanted to have, uh, we might, well, we've, uh, we've already had Chester on way back yeah. when. They want to come on again. We might do They've it. I've got the book again. again. I've got the book again. So, yeah, we might have to do that again. We just have a, honestly, we just, we're just solidly booked right now and we've got to f- try and f- squeeze everything in. We're trying to figure out a way to get more shows out. But, uh, yeah, the box hog is interesting. They were, so they were, the videos were showing them going into this massive rock that was shoved between two mountains and that was supposed to be the temple of Lukenheimen. Now, now I got the, now Lukenheimen. It's, uh, now I, I feel like I got to say it properly. <clears throat> Lickenheimen. Lickenheimen. Yeah, there you have it. I can't do it. I'm terrible with these. More on the swap <laughs> cast from Matt. Almost the entirety of the area underwater from Norward, Norway to Ireland down to France was above water before the Younger Dryas. Look at the light blue area, Google Earth for a general idea. The Baltic Sea anomaly is possible proof. Our history is underwater. You guys are great. Lemminkainen. Lemminkainen? Back to Lemminkainen, and that's the temple. So they're trying to excavate in and get into that temple, but they have to take all this water out. They have to pump all this water out and get in there. Here we go. You'll like this one from Amber, uh, number 402. Just to add to that Project Blitz, it is beyond me that we follow her. Wait a minute. (laughs) What? what? (laughs) Okay, I'll just read it. All right, I'm just reading now, not responsible for anything that comes out of my mouth. Just to add to that Project Blitz, it is beyond me that we follow a religion from the Middle East and not some Northern American tradition. This is how they can get away with a Sharia law kind of dictate when it comes to women's rights and pushing religion in schools. The Satanic Temple has... The satanic temple has a right if you're going to allow religion in school, you need to allow them all. I think those blitz bastards would not appreciate a Wiccan circle, a Buddha meditation, a satanic ritual, a Hindu practice, now would they? It is the freedom of their religion, not all religions. I think at this point in history, looking back at the atrocities created from religion, I think we're smart enough not to go back to to that good old burning times. Yeah. But trust me, even religious people have gay children, have atheists in their families, and have premarital sex, and have to go to a different state to get an abortion or do it themselves. When faced with this little by little, these laws will never be able to hold ground. Ever again, we have come to far in maturity and lessons learned. Yes, these are the last gaspings of air on their barbaric thinking. Yep, but there is burning going on, the burning of books and free speech and censorship, and that's a bigger issue than that, I believe. Freedom of religion as well, but freedom of speech? I mean, geez, soon we're not going to be able to criticize the government. Fuck the government, especially you, Trudeau. Fuck or, you. Or religion. Uh, two of my favorite shows, Grammarica being number one and the bros being number two. Swap cast with the thing. Of course, we did get, uh, hey, this is Rob, black budget feed rock jingle. Too bad it was too late for me in Italy. I would have loved to call in. Anyway, you guys still rock. And I think I'll wrap it up about there. Maybe we'll do one more. Here we go. Happy 400th episode, Grimerica. Sorry to have to tell you again, but this episode, oh, yeah, they're going on about the sound problems, which are now fixed. So that's like ancient history. <laughs> All right, that's all I got. All right, there you have it. Thanks, buddy. There's a lot of comments on my political fucking, my political appearance on the Snake Brothers. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You got pretty political? Well, everybody's a fascist? Everyone's fascist. Is that what your your stance was? That was my stance. You might as well be Antifa at this point. Are you starting up your own chapter? I don't think the Antifa people would have me. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think I quite. They're the fake Antifa? You're the real Antifa? In my opinion, yeah. (laughs) Because they're 
No, I know, dude. It's the corporations are with them censoring, you know, other people against them. Yeah, there's it's something kind of a creep. There's a bit of a creepy uh, hypocrisy going on right now. And they're acting pretty fascist in their implementation. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> whereas I'm just saying stuff. Yeah. And telling you not to listen to me. Yeah. I think there's a difference. I'm yeah. not hitting you with a little mini bat that I pull out of my sock and yeah. telling you to listen to me. Yeah. Probably don't listen to me. Probably not a good idea. But I mean, honestly, it's pretty true what you're saying. It's just, it's all one big. I, it's all one corporate big. Corporate government, fucking, uh, you know, fuck the small guy, fascist yeah, state, you know. Pretty much. Yeah. Totally. But what can you do? Hey, you can Everyone read the Paul Magic and get out I of this. I popped into some shrooms there in Natasha a couple weeks ago. You forget about all that shit. Fuck it. Honestly, you got to do that once in a while because it starts to beat you up. I can get in that point where I'm just fucking pissed about it. Yep. I'm sick of it. Yep. I'm sick of you motherfuckers. And you just yep. got to forget about all that because that's right where they want you. I think when you're that pissed at them, you're just as useless. It's just, like that fear is the mind killer. I don't know. Just tune in and drop out. So that's part of it. You can tune in and drop out or you can be like or is it too angry because in? of it all. Because I find that when you hit that cynical level, if you get too cynical about the whole thing, that's not helping either. Because then, like, all the kindness starts to leak out of the society, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> which is probably what they're going for. Yeah. So. Yeah, you can do all that sober, too. You don't have to do the shrooms. You can just. Fuck, oh, you know, Graham and his anti-shroom. You're going to have no, so no, much. Not you're going to have just, so you much know, fun just babysitting you know, a whack of us in, next month. In only Grand a month Camp? Camp? At Grand Mara Camp. Okay. Well, we're thinking about so we get. I think we might want to hang out at Grand Air Camp and then stay at the Cooley. Maybe want a tent in the free, I don't know. We, cold? We've got some decisions to make there, but it looks like <laughs> it's going to be fucking cold to be tenting. So we're thinking maybe we hang oh. out at the campground for a while and then head to this little resort that'll be pretty quiet. And they yeah. told us we could sort of have the run of the place. Do we have to do any work or anything like that? Like I need to get a list of who all wants to come. No, I mean like work on the land. Yeah, we do need to do some of that. Okay. But I just mean to sleep. Yeah, we yeah, might not want to yeah. sleep on the land yeah. until there's been a bit of work done yeah. or summer has yeah, shown yeah. up. Yeah. But anyway, that is March 21st. We will be down there. We'll have a whole caravan coming down. Like we're loaded coming from Calgary now. Oh, yeah. You're going, Jay's going, Mike's going, Natasha wants to come. Oh, wow. So we'll have a full fucking, we were thinking we'll just rent an SUV or something. Cool. Unless Michael buys that motorhome. Even if he buys a motorhome, maybe we should just take an SUV. I don't really want to be broken down on the side of the fucking highway. Michael's new motorhome. His new fixer-upper His motorhome. new fixer-upper. Yeah, he's buying it especially to be a fixer-upper. So let's go uh, find the problems. All right, I got one quote here, and let's wrap this thing up. Did we beg for support? We'll beg for money after the quote. Let this me, is, let me know, play the jingle. Yeah. Whoops. Oh, for Christ's sakes. We'll do this one. Pull this one out of retirement. It's not a UFO quote. I know it's not. They're all UFO quotes, though, really. Person on a flight. Unidentified flying object. I do feel like singing along to this one, though. I know. It's a profound UFO quote of the week. It's super (laughs) catchy. It's super catchy. This is from The Octopus of Global Control by Charlie Robinson. Octopussy has a, has a a home in the studio here with us. We should have Charlie back on. Soon. It's another CIA one, so sorry to the spooks out there. I was a CIA spy. There's at least one spook in the audience. I was a CIA spy, and <coughs> under orders, I fabricated intelligence. I lied to government leaders, and I managed a modest false flag operation. Nobody died. This is what CIA does, and that was Robert David Steele, former CIA agent and author. Did he say CIA or the CIA? Just CIA. Oh, he's legit. That's how you know. Yeah. If they say the CIA, they're fucking shills. Yeah. Totally. Shills of shills. Shills of shills. Shill shills. The worst kind of shills. Yeah. Double agent shills. Totally. Uh, support the show because. Because we can't do it without you. We've been working on the podcast. <laughs> Honestly, we can't do it without you guys. Um, we could not be doing this without you. We wouldn't even have mics or internet, anything like that. And uh, we are looking at, I mean, for selfish reasons, 
we've got so many people we want to interview. We just can't fit them all in. So we're actively, again, trying to find a way to fit in more shows. I think we found a way that over the next couple months, we'll find a way to start squeaking out some more content on a more permanent sort of basis. Yeah. And uh, so you guys got that to look forward to. Give us two or three months. I'd say by summer for sure, we'll be rolling to at least six episodes a month or so. Something. Well, in there. don't make any promises. I We're mean, not going like to commit to it like year, we did last time because you guys didn't even fucking show up and support extra. Well, yeah, some a people did. Of it grew you did. a little bit. Yeah, it but, grew a little bit, but. We're just going to do it this time, and it's not going to be for a month. We're just going to—we're not going to commit to anything, but we just want to start doing more shows. Yeah, it'll so be we're like just gonna you know an extra show shows. every two or three weeks, kind of thing. You know, totally. Yeah, uh, and some days there might be more. Like one, I mean, you know, it might be like a few a week all of a sudden pumping out. But you know what it's like scheduling interviews and then interviewing keeping and everything editing going. A lot of people from you know overseas, and so it's uh, always a challenge with the timing. Totally. But we, I mean, we've been getting a ton of interest in people wanting to come on the show lately. So good time to cram out some show, which means probably a good time for you guys. Head over. There's a bunch of extra value coming your way. You got 403 episodes in the back catalog right now for free. Uh, I also just dumped the full unabridged version of uh, the manifesto into the black budget oh. without all my interrupting and stuff. Wow. We got it all as one file. So wow. what I suggest is you sign up for the black budget. And download that motherfucker because it doesn't exist anyplace else. And I have it on good authority that it's not going to exist anyplace else in, uh, in audio for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah. So we're trying to push this out in, until I can get a, Until I can get a hold of Teddy himself. So I'm working on getting a hold of Ted. Doesn't seem like it's going to be an easy feat. See if I can get his blessing. But uh, anyway, if you're a supporter, I just download it. It's like a 250 megabyte file and then you've just got it. You'll always have your audio book of the manifesto america.ca slash support you sign up for a monthly do a one-time donation do any of that stuff and you'll get that black budget feed is the f, uh, after. f for fascism in there too understanding, understanding the, the f word, word like david mcgowan is, is also there as in well there. Yeah. so a couple couple free audiobooks there for any donation like just yeah. describe to people how to get to black budget again it's any donate any one-time donation it's still value for value right any one-time any, donation or any monthly. A monthly but you know just anything and we'll just give you access to it if you can't afford it <laughs> email graham at grahamerica.com we'll give you links to it anyway so yeah and we do have uh we'll probably throw another i think we'll have another audio book to throw in there in another two three weeks yeah might as well throw yeah. the, the the god, god man word. in there uh, yep yep once sure. you've done it yep give you guys the god a, word the man made flesh i think yeah that was called god man the god. word made flesh <laughs> I, I always get that wrong yeah. yeah i think you're right so anyway that's uh just a couple nuggets of what's in that black budget feed right now of course there is another 40 or 50 episodes in there grimerica.ca slash support you sign up and you will be navigated to a page that has the info for that feed and away you go uh, other than that, we love you. Have some fucking good vibes for your weekend. I'll play them at the end of the episode. Join for your the week, chats. join the chats. GarmerAmerica.ca slash chats. I think we had about 20 people join the chats this week, so keep, keep them coming. We're up to almost 600 people in those chats. Honestly, if you want to get a hold of us or chat with like-minded people, that seems to be the best place to do it. If you're interested in meetups, that's where all the meetups have been starting to happen. There's a meetup room in there where... I think there's been four or five little meetups now, guys going out for beer or for a hoot or to watch the game or whatever it is. We always get seem to get a picture. Of, I think the record so far is like four people. So see if you guys can get a bigger meetup than four. If you guys want to do a proper meetup, you want us to talk about it on the show, just shoot us an email. I don't mind uh, letting people know where your meetups are because, I mean, the chats are still only a couple percent of the actual audience. So there's thousands of people that haven't found their way from the chats that aren't following us on Twitter that aren't signed up for the newsletter. And the only way they hear about us is when we talk about it on the show. So support the show, sign up for the chats, do all the stuff in the newsletter, do all the stuff in the show notes. What else? Uh, that's about it. Email Graham at Graham Spam Graham. We need more spam. Synchronicities, stories, all that good stuff. Feedback. Love it. Don't say ham, you say spam. Wow, interesting. Spam. That wasn't the jingle I was expecting to be. You know what? That might be the first jingle that ever got sent to us yeah, from maybe. Neil Davies from the UK. Wow. Shout out to Neil. I think he's still a supporter. Two UK bucks posse. a month. UK Hashtag. posse. He could be one of the first UK posses. Yep. We gave that title to Kevin. And Graham Gainsford's up there too. Graham Gainsford's up there. Like those three dudes and Lee, they'll be the royal uh, family of Graham. Grand America UK posse for sure. 
John Gainsford has been around since about day yeah. one. The Knigets of the round table. Yeah. Lee runs, of course, the Facebook page for us. A lot of that. Graham just has been around from day one, helping us with feedback, helping us stay cool, keeping us grounded. So, grammarica.ca slash support. All the stuff in the show notes. Tell your friends about the show. We love you. Be kind to each other. Enjoy this chat with Alex Alex Kazemi. Pop Magic. This should be a fun one tonight. We've got Alex Kazemi with us. He's a pop artist, a creative director, and an author. His work's been featured in Apple Music, Dazed, V Magazine, Playboy, all over the place. And he's written an awesome book, I must say. It's called Pop Magic, A Simple Guide to Bending Your Reality. So I'm looking forward to chatting about this. It was really inspiring. Alex, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me here. I'm really stoked. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, like I said, I mean, I, I do really did. I, I liked your book. I thought it was very easy to digest for people that are new to magic and people also, I'm sure, that, that are, you know, very well versed in it. And it was inspiring. I found your story inspiring. I found uh, the uh, your concepts and your principles inspiring. So I really, uh, I don't know where you want to start. I mean, we could start on, uh, you know, what brought you to writing the book, I guess. I mean, there's a lot to get into. You got quite the background and quite the journey to make in the book. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, the reason I wanted to write the book was because I didn't see the kind of book about magic that I wanted to exist out there. And I felt like I had to be the one to create it because I saw something shift in our cultural zeitgeist with um, how magic was being talked about in pop culture. Yeah. But then there were these like subreddit, you know, online message boards and all this kind of stuff that wouldn't really exist, you know, maybe 30 years ago. And I kind of wanted to capture how I saw people talking about magic in a way that was accessible, practical, and simple. Whereas I feel like a lot of the occult books out there are very bloated and intimidating and kind of difficult to follow sometimes when magic in itself and practicing it, you can do it, you know, right away. And it's, and it's accessible and it's not something that should be kind of gatekeeped and, and hidden though. That's what makes it cool also. But I also like the idea of like a typical top 40 type person practicing magic. Like that's the kind of world I want to live in. Yeah. Well, it's definitely been popular in the last, uh, geez, five to 10 years. I feel like since we've been doing this podcast and I don't know if it's cause we're focusing on it more, but I mean, it's changed my life a couple of times, but you know, as I learn, the more I learn, the sort of the less I know about it. And, and I, I am also hesitant to continue in a way because I've, you know, I've had people sort of warn me, be careful with, especially with entities and spirits and, oh, yeah. you know, attachments and negative influences. And so, I mean, there's a ton of questions, questions here, but I guess we should start with, um, like get, get into a little bit more about why you didn't think there was any books like, cause you kind of cover different, you kind of cover a, a bunch of different topics at a, at a really easy to digest level. So was it because there wasn't, there was some focused on chaos and some on this and some on that, but not really on a mix of it all. Yeah, kind of, kind of like that. And I saw repeating themes and repeating coincidences in the books about magic that I 
that I had read that I kind of wished was just stripped to the bone type of magic. Like right. that was the type of book that I was looking out okay. to write and, yeah. and just explaining it to people and trying to try as hard as I could to show the skeptic how practical magic can sometimes be sometimes in your life, because that is also a big part of magic. You know, a lot of people think or people who practice are crazy or, you know, none of this is real and, or we're of the devil or any of that kind of stuff. So I kind of wanted to show how you could use it in your everyday life in a way that can also make life in itself more magical, you know, like with the connection of the word magical or however you associate with that. And, um, yeah, I guess it was kind of like a, a remix, like a, a blender type of book, you know, of all, of all this stuff. And I had to deep dive study a lot of a lot of different types of magic. And writing that entities chapter was such a relief for me because it kind of put together something that I started to understand in my own practice about spirits. When I said that spirit uh, entities are spirits who like to do drag, because I because I kind of had realized that. When we call on spirits, you know, we're calling on um, I mean, when we call on an entity, we're calling on probably a spirit taking on that role with that vibration. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 So would you warn people about that? I mean, not you wouldn't. I mean, I uh, <laughs> I, I think there's yeah, you, I mean, you I did talk about it in your chapter, like, you know, the, the good versus evil thing. And, and it's it's pretty subjective on it's more about your intention than, than what's out there, I think, is what you're trying to say. Well, I know a young girl who, um, when she was 18, discovered the Satanic Bible, and she completely misinterpreted it. And she did a, a ritual in which she sold her soul to Satan, and she woke up with a bunch of flies all around, and then she invoked a, a demon, and all of this stuff started to happen, and... Uh, she started to get really bad sleep paralysis and all this start, a lot of crazy stuff started to happen. And then the entities started to have like addictions and, and fetishes and they would latch onto her. And, and, and so there's definitely a risk when you think that you're going into this stuff with so much confidence that you're more powerful or that you know how to handle these entities or attachments. For sure. Huh. So then What's like, where, where's the best place to start? Because I, I mean, at what, at what point are you doing magic <clears throat> inadvertently? All the time. Yeah. I mean, like, I cause that's my take on life is you're always doing some sort of magic, like careful with your thoughts. Cause they're doing shit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's a very Kabbalistic point of view also like that your, that your consciousness and how you think you're matching with a reality that matches that consciousness. And I've actually noticed in my own life, if I have negative thinking, well, guess who I get visits from negative entities, you know? And if I have really, am I, if I'm in a darker depressive state, I get negative entities visiting me because I opened myself up to that world, you know? So if I'm feeling lower vibrations, a lower vibrational spirit will match me. But they say that, energy and on the vibration starts in our thoughts and our mind. So I think we can create positive entities, angels, guides, all these positive things as much as we can create the negative ones. But you're completely right. We are all always doing magic. Well, where do the, where do you suppose psychedelics fit into that? You know, I, I just ate some mushrooms again on the weekend and I just, you know, that feeling you get is just, yeah, it's got to be, I mean, I find I'm a proponent that they're an antidepressant and good for your soul and all that already, but just those feelings of euphoria and love and everything else that you can get has got to, like, I feel like I could just, you know, and I'm having a fuck of a week already, and I feel like everything's just bouncing off me. That wasn't bouncing off me last week. Last week, that shit was getting to me a little bit. I've got a couple projects at work that are really tested my resolve. And I got to tell you, after, because I've been microdosing and that it was still getting through. But then after a nice little Saturday night, I mean, I'm, I'm coming to this week. It's just like, whatever. Yeah, I think actually it's very interesting that you mentioned mushrooms because I, I find that people who are not open to magic are not open to this stuff and they're 
one of those people who are just born not with that innate desire to do magic or to believe in it. Once they, you know, do shrooms one weekend, they start to see reality different and they get revelations and it can be a portal to, to start to do magic or get yourself into astral projection or astral travel. And, and, and a lot of people seem to use shrooms to have a metaphysical experience, you know, and I'm not, I'm pretty neutral on, on that kind of stuff, but if it opens a path for you and it's not harming you, I don't really see it as a problem, Yeah, but also free will, right? Like if you're going to do that, like every, everyone has a different type of way to alter their state of consciousness. Well, I, I thought of it because we we've talked to Thomas Hatzis multiple times now, and he's got a huge. He's drawing all these correlations between witches and psychedelic mushrooms and and all that sort of stuff. So it seems like the two have been connected for a long time. Yeah, and I think Timothy Leary talks about that a lot, and Terrence McKenna, and 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 there's there's that belief that psychedelics open up a portal but i think you can also if you're not that blocked up like and and and, and that that spiritually blocked up i think you can open that portal without those psychedelics also it just takes a lot of will and belief to shatter that barrier that is not making you believe in the metaphysical i mean something that makes me happy about magic is so and what i've experienced so far in life is, you know, the worst things can go wrong. Everything can be fucked to the point where you will not believe in this stuff anymore. And But that's the biggest test when you show up and have to believe in it. And you have to keep going. And I think I believe in that kind of like Herculean magic where you look at life as labors to survive rather than like, oh, I'm going to read a chaos magic PDF on Reddit and then not show up when the trials come. You know, I think that's like, I want a very realistic way of using magic. Yeah. Well, you're at your teachings are really action based, right? I mean, you can put yourself in that mind frame and do all the metaphysical work, but really it's also action. You have to try to, and we've been talking about that on the show a lot too, from the, whether it's the new thought or positive thinking, it still requires action, you know, positive action. Or, yeah. It requires yeah, I, effort. Yeah. Yeah. It's like the secret isn't to just sit on your couch and hope you well, win the lottery. That's exactly like that's pretty much what he says in his book. It's exactly. Like, it's almost. I exactly get so like fucking that. sick of hearing. You know, I, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. It's like, well, what else are you doing? Oh, you're watching fucking TV from the time you get off work to the time you go to bed, and then you're spending a half an hour reading your little book on magic and doing your thing and hoping that you know your life turns around. It's like that's not how it works, man. You you put no. the fucking TV guide away and, and start making some real steps towards towards turning that corner, you know, just start with a little fucking thing that you can do tomorrow. A hundred percent. And you're exactly right. It's about turning off the feeds, turning off of Netflix, deprogram. You can't, you can't just sit there and do your visualization and then not have your habits mirror what you want to manifest into reality. Right. It requires a lot of self-discipline, a lot of will, a lot of, you know, in the behind the scenes process of you getting to your goals requires you to change and transform. And if you just think that things are just going to show up, then you clear people clearly don't understand what magic is. Yeah. Did this, I mean, speaking, going back to sort of the mushroom and psychedelic acts aspect versus, you know, drugs and drinking or hard drugs and drinking. I mean, I've, I'm coming up on 12 years now. Uh, clean and sober, but my, my whole metaphysical thing shifted like after that. I mean, I was always, I was into a little bit of meditation and all that before, before that, but after hitting my bottom and coming out of that is when my, everything opened up for me metaphysically. And, and I've heard a lot of people, like I know of quite a few people that are clean and sober and they've, they have this, this sort of metaphysical or, 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 uh, um, mystical practice. And I, and you talk about that in your book a little bit too, right? Am the I straight edge? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, you you're kind of you kind of <laughs> chronic smoker, so it's hard to, you know, there might be some blockages there. You know, if if you maybe would lay off the weed a little bit, maybe because the mushrooms probably are beneficial and some weed, but yeah, I'm there might be some blockages more, there. I mean, I'm the first person to say I smoke a little more weed than I should, <laughs> but I'm not gonna. I'm not. You know. <laughs> I know a lot of people like that in Vancouver. I'm not gonna. Yeah. 
I'm not going to be too hard on myself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's well, a weed's a tough one. On sobriety, that's that's really amazing and I agree with you. I think actually magic is a great substitute for what addictions desires are because I also struggle with addiction and I know that whole process. And for me, metaphysics and magic was actually my way of realizing that I can reach out to external light and be more fulfilled rather than the, going into the chaotic hells and dungeons of the, the short, used, transient pleasures that addiction gives you. Whereas when I do magic, I feel so much more everything that I wanted from that pursuit of whatever addiction that I'm going down during that time magic makes is more fulfilling for me. Yeah. And it, and it, it's almost like a high, like it, it makes sense why recovery literature is around having a higher power right? because they, I don't know if shamans or some people, some metaphysical people argue that like addiction is like the op is, is spiritual disconnection. Yeah. And like, yeah. that's why when we make this fuse to get reconnected to the spirit world or, um, a metaphysical relationship with the upper worlds. That's why it's so fulfilling and, and why I think it's so beneficial to my own sobriety as well. And also like people don't like addiction is really like an everyday thing, you know, like you fight it every day, you know, and you fight that urge almost every day. Like you could, you have to, there's so much will and discipline to organize your life around making sure that you're sober and you're not going into those negative chaotic spirals. Yeah. And I think that also aligns with magic in a weird way too, like self-discipline, self-mastery. So I kind of had realized like by the time I had, I had finished the book that like with, with like what I, like all the resentment that I had about struggling with addiction and not being able to do the things that people could do just in moderation without wanting to obliterate myself. I had realized that, you know, like this is actually great because this extreme negative addiction sent me, to an extreme positive spirituality. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. Sense. yeah. Oh yeah. hundred percent. I mean, that's, I, I totally appreciate my, my background and where I came from. I mean, I, I don't think I would even change it at this point. I mean, I don't think I could be where I am without going through what I had to go through. You know? Probably a couple of things you could have left out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I still go by that opposite of addiction is connection. And, and that's, that's yeah, not that's my exactly. line. I stole that from Buddy that was on Joe Rogan, but that really seems to be it, whether it's connection to spirit, connection yeah, to self, exactly. connection to others, family, other connection people, to yeah. others. Yeah. I mean, you can function. Those are kind of like the four wheels. You can function without one or two of them, but once you lose three or four of them, you're fucked. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah, who said that on Rogan? Was it Russell Brand? No, it wasn't it was, Russell Brand. It was uh, Hate, I'll Jonathan Hate, maybe? No, Hate? you guys keep talking. Hate? I'll find out. Yeah. Okay. yeah, Hate, and, and, Hate's the and, coddle in the mind, dude. And I think the part of, I mean, the, the big part that I heard you talk about at the end of your book, which I was thinking, I wonder if he's going to, when he's going to mention, you know, meditation and mindfulness, but that's also a big part of recovery. And that was one of my, you know, tools at the beginning that really helped me get to that space of realizing that, Hey, like these, that's, I'm not my thoughts. I'm separate. Like I had one of those mindfulness experiences where I was watching my thoughts and realizing, well, who's watching my thoughts? Like, that's me. That's me, not the thoughts. And being able to separate that out and create that awareness of whether it's negative self-talk or emotions that I, want to accept instead of just push down or what, I mean, whatever that to me was the key to, to transcending addiction, but also in magic. I mean, intention and attention is so important. So I kind of wanted to ask you about that is, is you did have a nice section at the end of your book there about it and how important it is, but you wanted to talk about that a little bit and how, cause you know, to me, if you're distracted completely, like how, how effective at magic can you be if you're in your head constantly? That's, that's very, very true. And I think, you know, you're exactly right. We exist as pure awareness, you know, you know, we're not our thoughts. We're this midpoint watching the ego and our higher self consciousness, you know, and I think, um, magic and meditation are completely connected because you're right. When we're doing a visualization where we have a clear intention, our mind needs to be completely clear yeah. when we're practicing and meditation is that astral exercise to clear out our minds 
and and to reach that nirvana state. I mean, when I do TM, it's like a it's like I can't even describe it. It's like the most euphoric thing. Like my whole body goes numb. Like I hear no thoughts. And as an addict, right, the only thing I want is like internal peace, constant or internal peace, because yeah. I would use my addictions as a way to shut down, to not hear anything. Yeah. And to know that that light was within myself to access kind of frustrated me because it was like society taught me all wrong. Yeah. You know, it wasn't outside of me. Yeah, guys, totally. Society is not, yeah, to- does not yeah, have totally. your best interests and heart, my friend. <laughs> it nope. does not. I mean, it's, 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 it's a sad thing that we, we're we all built this thing and it's just turned against us. <laughs> and I don't even yeah. know, you know, maybe there is some evil motherfuckers in a castle somewhere pulling the strings, but it doesn't seem like that's the case all the time. It's me, like my life can be shitty without those people, just from other humans. You know, yeah. there's I don't know what we did, but anyway... The opposite of addiction isn't sobriety, it's connection. If you are alone, you cannot escape addiction. If you are loved, you have a chance. Quote by Johan Hari. Huh. Okay, sick. Joe Rogan, number 1255 or something like that. Oh, Johan. Yeah, Johan. It, was, it was a great, it, that was, was a good show. Yeah. Yeah, that's dope. Yeah. Yeah, I liked how you talk about in your book about being able to withstand like Darren was talking about the society and the pressures and the, the whether it's the porn hub or the Netflix or stuff that's yeah. just really not going, getting you down that path. And if you can, you know, transmute that energy into your positive, you know, whatever you're doing to, 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 to find your path or to be on that path was key. And that was pretty inspiring. Like, you know, I even, even just last night, I am reading this big, this big thick book, and I was like, "No, I'm not going to turn on Netflix and watch another episode of Vikings." Vikings, eh? You know what? Is I'm going to just like because I'm interested in all the Norse stuff right now too, but I'm just going to read another chapter in that book and try and read a chapter in that book every night because it's a huge book that I'm prepping for the show and like, so yeah, just so sometimes you just need that little nudge. Why don't you go tumbling down the dune rabbit hole? I'm like, no, no, I'm like no. five books into fucking dune now. <laughs> Buddy turned into a worm. Anyway, um, fuck, I forget what I was going to say now. Yeah, I think for what you were saying, yeah, for sure. That's actually the chapter that you're referring to is my favorite chapter in the book. You are the Illuminati. I wrote that because <laughs> I was just exhausted seeing the societal pressure and what had become normalized in our cultural consensus about instant gratification, about narcissism, about approval addiction, all of this stuff. I was like, why are we, why are we acting like this is normal? You know, people who act the way that people act on Instagram, like about, you know, 30 years ago, they would be like, you have a personality disorder (laughs) or something, you know, like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. Like literally like there's this, type of exhibitionism that is so normalized that I also found to be really kind of gruesome. So there was that aspect, but then also like what you said, the Pornhub, the Netflix, the feeds, all of that stuff. And I find that that stuff is an, is designed to be endless because it's designed to make you addicted. Yeah, totally. That's the number one addiction these days, I would say that no one's talking about is addicted to um, social media yeah. addition uh, you know, whether that's whatever form of social media that takes. I mean, it's all sort of social media in a, in a way, but yeah. I mean, that's definitely, you know, those little, you got all these, all the best psychologists in the world get hired by people to fucking figure out how to trick you into doing things that aren't good for you. I mean, it's a tough thing to be up against, but yeah, that's how it starts. But I I got hooked on that Messiah show on Netflix. Have you watched that one? No, it's pretty good. You should try. You should try. Yeah, it. see, he's already <laughs> trying to. <laughs> <laughs> see, it's like it's like it's like it's just so it's so what happens, you know? I feel like I feel like just that's the number one thing you have to protect yourself because <laughs> this stuff is so normalized. So as soon as you're like. I'm in my own world, you know, I don't do that. And then someone's like, hey, did you watch this on Netflix? You know what I mean? Or and all that stuff. Then you have to reprogram yeah. yourself again. You're adding it to the list. You're adding it to the list. And of I was stuff thinking the other day, out. because I, I, I have been going down this Dune rabbit hole. I've been reading nothing but Dune for months now. And well, I'm, no, and no, I was no you were reading quite a bit 
Well, I read a lot. I got audiobooks. I got a lot going on, but I'm like Dune right now, big time. And I'm wondering, is this is this the same? Is it the same as just being hooked on a Netflix show or being watching every Flames game? Am I is this the same thing? But then I'm like, I think it's a little better, just because your imagination is working constantly. Oh, that's interesting. You just challenged my own sense of thought. That, because, because I was like, like this, but then I was like, oh, wait a second, though, because I'm constantly, I'm not just reading this. I'm imag- imagining this whole fucking Dune world, and that's why the movies always suck, right? Because you've yeah. read this book and you've built this whole world in your head. Now, that might just be my sorry-ass way of, uh, you know, giving, saying no, no, my, justifying, it, justifying right my vice. But I, that was my excuse is that the fact that I'm building this whole realm in my head and is, is why it's, I'm why it's not Netflix. Yeah. Well, you just, I just thought of something. I guess the difference is, is that, you know, I feel like we're encouraged to binge watch Netflix. We're not encouraged to binge read books. You know what I mean? <laughs> like there's, there's a, it's not like read and chill is not a meme, you know? No, no, no. Like, <laughs> Like there's a positive element to sitting down and being focused and practicing your 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 sense of focus. Like Cal Newport always talks about focus is so important in the digital economy. And I think there's something about sitting down and, and reading a book that requires focus, whereas I feel like Netflix can be kind of like vegetating a little bit, you know, yeah. just like numbing your brain. So speaking of that, you do dig into your book quite a bit about how to, to transmute your, your emotions, let's say, and energy. So that could be considered like instead of, you know, going on to Pornhub or Netflix, you're going to transmute that. You want to describe a little bit more about that process of how you would f- let those emotions happen? I mean, you talk about, you know, your y- younger uh, in your life and when you would not accept emotions and I guess now using those emotions in a magical practice. Yeah, I mean, I think alchemy is one of the most important parts of magic. And it's kind of, become, it's kind of become a buzzword in the past few years also around the self-help and occult type community. But it's all based in magic. And I think transmutation and locating the emotion, locating the feeling, just thinking of it as a color and then thinking of it as coming back as something more positive, converting that energy you can do that. It takes a tremendous amount amount of will, but you can change where the funnel, where you go down, you know, or the tunnel, whatever, you know, you just, you can change where your energy goes. And I think that is so important for people to know because a lot of the social media and our phones and all this stuff are hijacking our energy. And if you make that choice, you know what, I'm going to transmute that, uh, that, that desire to go on Pornhub and open 50 tabs to actually, you know, going to the gym or going to go lift or working on my practice. And it's the same desire. It's just going from lead to gold. It's changing. And I think that is something that I push really hard to inspire people about, because I think emotions are not bad things. All emotions are at our energy. And I guess a lot of men also, you know, were socialized fuck your feelings, fuck your emotions, blah, 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 this stuff. You don't need any of this stoicism, all that stuff. But you just think of it as energy You're filling up your body. It's a great opportunity to remember to do magic. And that's why I say in the book, you know, have like a magical necklace to press on to remind you this is time to do my alchemy, you know, something, a visual cue. Like I think visual cues are very important for everyday magic as well. Yep. Good point. Um, do you want to, the other part of, I liked about your book and the way you're pushing people is out of victimhood and not to be the victim. Like you've got responsibility and control over your, your future and your life. Like, I really appreciate that part that you focused on, you know, not being a victim, being responsible. And that's kind of what I like about the recovery community as well. It's like, you're, you're taking your life back, you know, your authentic no self, no blaming. Like you can recognize that shit happened and, but not be let that resentment uh, get a hold of you. You know, it's funny. Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich, 1937. He's got a whole fucking chapter on transmuting sexual energy. Oh. 
Yeah, that yes he does. Yeah. Well you've got a you've got a chapter on that too, right? Sex magic uh alchemy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And that's kind of that what you just pinpointed yeah. was kind of the reference of that. I yeah, kind of yeah. just upgraded it yeah. to our modern digital world and in the way that I talked about it. But yeah, sexual energy is so fucking powerful. That's why we're exploited. 24 seven, when people say sex cells, they're saying sex magic cells, you know, magic cells, sex cells, hypnotizing you, exploiting your vulnerability towards wanting and craving sex is what these corporations do. And um, especially as a young man, I saw that a lot in advertising too, you know, like buy acts, you know, cause hot girls will, you know, want to date you or, let's go see transformers because megan fox is so hot you know what i mean like there's just like there's just so much like you don't even question those decisions because they're so carnal you know, somatic you know yeah. and so animalistic and i think like when you take control back from that world i think something can be extremely powerful about that and it's exactly what you said it's about accountability and, and taking taking control back for your life and not being a victim. You know, a lot of people also just find this stuff exhausting. They're like, hey, man, fuck off. I want to watch my Pornhub and I want to do whatever I want, you know, because actually changing your life, like you said about recovery, requires an extreme amount of mental effort and work that a lot of people don't want to put in. But if from our childhood, we're programmed to these negative conscious negative consciousness negative patterns negative belief systems then why wouldn't we try to undo them when they start to appear in our life you know and all that kind of stuff well not only that it's like are you really happy just doing that shit like is yeah that, is that your calling is that where you want to be when you're 70 you know because you know if you just take some of that time and put it you know you just i don't know yeah, but don't forget. No, I mean, no, no, you're exactly right. There's a distraction Cause, to cause it because I right? was there. Yeah. Right? So I speak from experience, and it's not like I was living the dream. You know, you're fucking miserable most of the time, yeah, and that's yeah. what you're doing is trying to distract yourself from that miserableness. Perfect. That's so just perfect. make your life not miserable, and then you won't need the the, the distraction. That's so. That's so perfect because. Because that's exactly what that stuff functions as. It's a distraction from our emotions and our feelings. And what I what I like about recovery literature and magic literature also is, you know, it's a way to validate those feelings, acknowledge them, process them, mm -hmm. let them come through, let them pass by, let them flash, and then move on, you know? Whereas, oh, I can't handle it. I need to just escape right away, you know? Like, that. that just for me just leaves me into like hell, you know, it takes me to the underworld. Yeah. Literally the underworld. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I can't even describe. And sometimes it's not as hard as it may seem. The, the pure act of acknowledgement sometimes will dissipate it enough. That's really, that's really true. Also, you know, like just the, the just the recognition of it is yeah. just a step forward yeah, yeah. of being like, wow, yeah. I can really, alchemize i can use yeah. magical alchemy i can make this switch yeah sometimes just saying it out loud yeah or thinking and, it out loud. your whole fucking life doesn't fall apart just because you said some shit yeah. that you're too scared to say yeah anyway so do you want to get into some i mean you've had some crazy experiences i mean just so people that are still wondering you know thinking this is all woo woo or whatever but i mean we've i mean it's changed it's changed my life in the past and uh do you want to talk about some of the stories that you've actually experienced? Yeah. If, if mean, you can, I mean, I know there's some, there's some people that say you shouldn't talk about that, but I think if you're helping people, I think it's good to share well, some yeah, things that sure. are, you know, that are, for that sure. are beyond I'm, I'm, the realm of coincidence. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to talk about it. I mean, I think, well, there's the weird stuff, you know, like the entity sending you signs, like enter, uh, seeing repeating numbers, getting calls from numbers that, you know, just like you do a spell and then the phone rings and then there's no air in the house phone, you know, just really weird, typical paranormal stuff, obviously. But when it came to end sleep paralysis a lot, when my early days was just a lot of entities dragging me around the house and and weird really weird shit and then but you know practicing magic obviously 
created really weird things. I mean, the Marilyn Manson thing is probably one of the most weirdest magical stories. When I was 21, I um, discovered magic and I was like, okay, you know, if this shit's real, like, let's take this to the fucking next level, you know? And I was like, let's like, if I want someone in my life right now, it would be Manson because of how much he's inspired me and, and just, in my at that time in my life where I felt powerless, I felt powerful watching his interviews, and he was just a big intellectual inspiration for me. So I was like, okay, let's just see what could happen. So I do this black <laughs> candle magic spell. I just use black candle, a uh, black candle because he's a Capricorn. So I did the black candle magic spell, and then around like two weeks into it, like during the light of the moon, where like spells usually manifest, someone was like, hey, you're not gonna believe it, like. I met Manson at this party and he gave me his number. And I like, I don't know if like it, something took over me, but I was like very aggressive. I was like, give me his number. You know, I was like, give, <laughs> give it, like, give it to me. Like I'm doing this, give it to me. She's like, okay, cool. I'll give it to you. So she gave it to me and I was like, okay, I'm going to, you know, do my, another spell. I'm going to visualize him texting me back. And I'm going to visualize somehow him helping me or doing something for me in my life. So I did that and I did the spell and I was like, okay, you know, I waited like an hour or two <laughs> thinking that it, this, I was younger, right? I didn't know how magic worked. I was like, he's, he's going to message me tonight, whatever. I was like, whatever, fuck this. I'm going to bed. I put my phone in the kitchen because at that time I didn't, well, I still don't have my phones in my bedroom. <laughs> and then, uh, he texted me back and was like, hey, it's M.M. Sorry, I've been with Johnny Depp. What's up? And I was like, holy fuck. Like, I reality just shattered. Like, I fucking did it. Like, magic is real. And some people would be like, oh, you know, that's just a fucking coincidence. Or you know people who know Marilyn Manson and that just happens in your life and all this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. I am fully 100% in belief that that would have never had happened if I hadn't had done those spells and I hadn't casted out that energy. And then from there, we kind of collaborated on stuff. He he, re he released my Snapchat movie after uh, a Hollywood horror director, I was younger, had like set me up into fake meetings and he was taking notes of my ideas and executing them behind my back because I was so naive and I just was so excited to collaborate and all this stuff. And he left me behind and I was like, I, I sent him the link and I was like, these are my ideas. What the fuck are you doing? And he's like, you're just some stupid kid. And I was like, oh, fuck you. And I got so mad. And then I Manson tweeted out my Snapchat movie and that really got a lot of coverage. And I and that was really cool. And yeah, so that was that was just probably my favorite magical story. And honestly, when I had since I had done that spell, really good stuff in my career happened. So I think. It's just really weird. And then what about the, uh, was there one with Swift as well? Yeah, Taylor Swift. I did. Because uh, that I was saw. pretty interesting to me, bending reality with that too. I mean, fucking yeah, crazy. Yeah, that was fucked. That was fucked. I didn't even understand how that could go that far. I mean, I had read, like, just, I, I really enjoyed her reputation album because I just liked this idea of not being a victim and just, owning your reputation, not giving a fuck about what people think about you. And in this type of, you know, politically correct era and her, and, and just seeing how that situation with Kanye and Kim was kind of unfair. And so I was like, you know, I'm going to do like a healing spell and I'm going to write this piece. I'm just hope that she sees it. And, you know, for paper magazine, I was like, you know, I'm just going to send out healing energy. And then I got, you know, a message that she had saw it and wanted to meet me. And then I met her and we talked and about like life a little bit. And I was like, after that, and then there's a picture of us. And I was like, and I was looking at it. And I'm like, this just looked like it just like fell out of like an altar. Like, am I peeling layers of reality with these spells? Like, what the fuck is going on? Am I changing the order of the cosmos? Like, I just didn't understand because, you know, I think also, I hope you kind of maybe had felt, I, maybe you had felt this way by the time I had, you finished the book, but I felt like I kind of wanted people to be a little disturbed by my interest in pop culture and the way that I put those things and those people on pedestals as a way to kind of think about how society does that to us, how yeah, it creates yeah. separation in us. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was like, 
I was explaining to Darren before we started talking. I mean, you know, you've got pop culture, you know, in your book and the forward and your, you know, you talk about meeting celebrities and, and you were pretty, pretty uh, aware to, to warn me of that, that it wasn't like, you know, you know, it wasn't about the endorsement of celebrities. Your book was about uh, deprogramming from the mass pop culture. So I appreciated that because right away I was just like, oh, hang on. Like this, this, <laughs> this could be going the wrong way, you know? <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no, for sure. And I think actually that was my way to allure people in yeah. using those. It's like a trap door. Like, hey, you're going to think you're going to read this book about this kid who did a spell to meet Taylor Swift, but you're actually going to learn real fucking magic and you're going to learn real practical applicable tools for your life and i think that was kind of fun for me to do because i like like pop and violence mixed together you know tricking people through pop into a different world yeah yeah that's that's fantastic so darren do you have any questions about that at all or you know no i remember marilyn manson back in the day we should have on the show (laughs) Give him my number. <laughs> no, I mean, he needs to, he's so connected to the occult and magic. I don't think he, he, he's been owning it in the, in the past few years. He's been talking about like Santeria and stuff in interviews. I have a few theories about him. I think him and LeVay did some weird shit. I feel like something happened there. Was LeVay around when he was there? He met LeVay. Oh, and, and before LeVay died, Antichrist Superstar blew up. So I was like, mm, Was that his first album? No, it was his second album. Yeah. Smells Like Children? Smells Like Children was his first album, right? Fuck. I, no, we should know this. Because it had Sweet Dreams on it. That was the first yeah, yeah. album? No, Antichrist was... Was the was second the one with, like, beautiful people and stuff? I don't think that was the second one. I can't remember. It all happened so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> this would have been so that that's I guess that was my point is like I was listening to the first Aunt Matt's and album must have been ninety three ninety four. Yeah, did you think he was special at that time? I thought he was fucking crazy at that time. Remember, was like telling the stories about him getting ribs taken out so he could suck his own dick and all that <laughs> stuff. Like you know, I I was in like some hick town in like Nowheresville, yeah. Canada. Yeah, when when he was coming out and I. I you know, we were into him for that reason. You know, I, the, the occult and all that was, was decades away from being on my radar. So, for sure. so for me, it was more just the Satanist aspect of it, I guess. That's the only real brush I had to paint him with. I think he's great. He, he's great for that reason. I think every teenager should have a Marilyn Manson phase for that reason so they can kind of go through that thing where I'm like, fuck institutionalized thinking, fuck uh, things that are trying to control me, oppression, all that kind of stuff. I think LeVay also embodies an archetype that is important for rebellion and all that stuff, but some people just take it so far and are so annoying about it. So is LeVay, yeah. is that the yeah. guy that we had on the yeah. guy that went to spiritual battle against Yeah, LeVay? he cut his cord in the astral realm and killed, killed him. him, yeah. So we interviewed the guy that, well, allegedly, I'm not assuming any, I mean, it was a damn, anybody of murder. No, well, no, let me look up the, well, it's not murder if it's in the astral realm, is it? I mean, anything goes in the astral realm. (laughs) (laughs) Hold up, hold up. We could die in the astral world. Well, he, he cut his cord in the astral realm and, and that's the night LeVay died. Oh, yeah. It was a whole, like, it was a whole big event happening. It was like, like it was 90s? like Back it was forth. deep spiritual warfare. Yeah, this is. He so, was yeah, a, I'll, I'll leave you the. I'll read you the synopsis from the app. The guy's name was Dave okay. Bryan. Okay. Dave Bryan, cowboy, pastor, spiritual warrior, joins us for a spine tingling chat about his real life encounter with possession and spiritual war- warfare at the highest level, the astral showdown against Anton Levey. 20 years ago to the day, oh. the breaching of the Gadar, the writings of King Solomon, the concept of prophecy, and the highest level Pentagon intelligence clearance for some of the, these Satanists are just of the few of the things we chat oh. about during this Give wild the episode. Fuck. Yeah, this show was fucking <laughs> off the hook. And like, oh. I had crazy shit go down in my life 
after this show and stuff came out. And I had my buddy Garrett even saying, like, just be careful because crazy shit seems to follow this guy around. His name's Dave Bryan. So anyway, yeah, he went, one of his friends was getting in deep with LeVay and it was getting weird. So apparently they had this whole spiritual battle going on and he won and then LeVay died. Wow. That's so interesting. Grimerica.ca slash EP248. I'll be listening to that. That's insane. Yeah. I'll have Grant email it to you. Do you guys like the Satanic Bible? I've never read it. Have you read it? No, no. Is it yeah. public domain? <laughs> people, people misinterpret. I mean, you, just like people, Crowley stuff too. I mean, people misinterpret the OTO as well and Crowley. I mean, it's yeah, but Crowley, man, he's talked about. He's, he's, yeah. I, 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 I found all of the classics to be kind of underwhelming when I read them. You know, I yeah. was like, this is it. This is. Yeah, this is it because I, I, <laughs> I was I was really upset actually. Like, yeah. I was like, isn't shouldn't Crowley's books be more? But then you you see people literally like worship him. You know, I mean, there's the whole kind of, you know, like I say in the book, like people who wear like Thelema robes and like take this shit so seriously is the same type of magic that a guy is doing on a Friday night with a beer. You know what I mean? It's like. But some people like that drama to magic. They like the aesthetics. They yeah. like the yeah, like, yeah. It's some weird. people just like drama. Period. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. Cut those people out real fast. <laughs> Turns out. Um, so, can you give us an example of like what are, we got? Some people in the audience that are thinking right now, like I want to do some fucking magic. What's uh, what's like? What's some good baseline? Not too sketchy, not like, too no, no, far like, off like the keep, like path. keep the entities out, maybe break yeah, protection like, stuff. Like kiddie like, pool where people can end up with an addiction monkey on their back, <laughs> taking them down to the casino. You guys, you guys know how this shit goes down. Wow. Yeah, I think. Um, okay, so if we're gonna talk about like protection spells. I would say you know, grab a glass of water, put some salt in it, grab a spoon, you know, twirl it around in the water. And uh, maybe visualize white light protecting your body and just visualizing protection from the evil eye curse, people talking bad about you, all that kind of negativity. There's that stuff. And then there's, you know, grabbing a crystal and (laughs) visualizing white light coming to you. I mean, this is kind of the pussy stuff. So, like, I think, but, you know, it's the starter stuff, but I think, like, it's cooler to... I think a candle magic spell, like, just go for it. You don't, I don't, I mean, you're not calling on an entity, you know, maybe you're just sending out energy to the spirit. But that's, that's the thing I say in the book, which was such a relief to write. I wrote this chapter called, how the fuck do I know when magic works? And um, it's kind of all these theories that I have about how it works. And one of them is that spirits and entities, you know, take a, kind of bring us gifts and can bend our reality if we work for them. But I would say just like a simple candle magic spell, you know, just like it's something not for a specific outcome because you might not be able to handle the the trials that will come with that. Maybe just like, I want to feel more joy. I want to feel more happiness. I want to feel more good feelings in my life, you know, and maybe something like that. Just like that's, that's the real kiddie pool stuff. If you want that, not the tree of life, you know, but I liked your, I liked your chapter on the candle magic and, and the moon as well. I mean, the moon plays a big part in it for you, right? Oh yeah, for sure. I'm definitely a believer in the astrological transits because I kind of made sure that I studied how my moods were under different moon phases. And I studied the archetypes and I was like, Hmm, like, let's like investigate this a little bit. And I was like, no, 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 this is too fucking weird that I would find myself doing the same things under Gemini moons or the same things under Aries moons or acting a certain way under a different moon phase. And I'm like, okay, is this like so deep rooted and subconscious that because I have this fucking information that I'm trying to make myself act like this stuff, or is this actually the planets and the cosmos emitting energies? And I, I, I believe in the metaphysical stuff. I believe, I believe that sometimes magic corresponds with, astrological moon phases and i think that 
there's a lot of uh, the planets can align if you know your birth chart, you know, it's very fucking weird to me that my book is coming out on a Sagittarius moon, which is my moon sign when I never planned for that. And anytime big life events happen for me are on Sagittarius moons. I just as a magical practitioner, I can't ignore this data. I can't ignore these coincidences. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. So how would you, would you, if people were starting to get interested in it and play around with it, to start paying attention to the moon cycle and, and you, would you explain how maybe what types of intentions would work during which moon cycles? Well, like full moon versus think, new moon, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, a new moon is a great time to plant seeds, new beginnings, start new things. It's, it's nature's, you know, the, the light of the moon is going to start. So it's like these two, it's the beginning of the two weeks of the light of the moon where we'll get to the moon growing in light till we get to the full moon. So I would say planting seeds on new moons, uh, big magic, big dreams, manifestations on the full moons and during the dark of the moon, which is what I've studied in my own life, lots of darkness and negativity and, and all the stuff that we have to battle comes up in, in the war of magic. Um, to alchemize and to actually do shadow work, you know, start to really write down uh, your negative thoughts and your negative belief patterns and, and, and start to remove those limited beliefs and, and dive deep during that time. And I, that's a good time for, because I don't believe in banishing and, and bindings because it's just creating more negative energy in your head. So I think, yeah, uh, those are those are great ones. And the light of the moon is great to just draw things into your life, like things that you want, you know, just anything that you want is a good time to do that. But yeah, like, dark of the moon. I like watch the, out for that one. I like that idea of uh, basing it around the moon. That's kind of like a built in kick in the ass for people, you know, instead yeah. of having to look at their calendar or look at they'll oh, fuck full moon. Fuck. I didn't do my shit this month or whatever, you know, that's good. You know, you should do a little booklet, a little uh, workbook. Come on. Little yeah, moon, maybe the maybe moon, one day. The I, moon I mean, magic I, workbook. Oh my God. <laughs> I think, I think um, what, what you said is true because like I haven't missed doing magic on a full moon or a new moon in five years. Like I'm very strict and disciplined about it. If there's a f something want someone wants to do something on a full moon sorry i'm gone i'm in the woods with my candles like you know like <laughs> it's like a very dedication to my belief to magic and i did so many spells to manifest the book that you guys that you guys read you know yesterday um because i had to believe that i could see it in my head first before i manifested it you know i, I had to and i had to believe i had to trust magic to create what i created does it always come with a price? I mean, or is that, I know that I know of some chaos uh, magic that friends of ours that have done chaos magic. And let's say like, for example, you know, they, they want, they need a certain amount of money and, and of course they forget about it. And then they do their little thing and they forget about it. And then they wreck their car for that exact amount of money. You know, I mean, there's yeah, yeah. story after story of that. And, uh, you know, Beyond well, coincidence, you know, you can't, well, no, that's no, 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 that, that's real. There's a cost. There's a cost for sure. And I think the cost is always different. And I think I learn from my costs and actually I like my costs because they're a part of my soul's evolution and they're a part of me doing the work. If, you know, I learned that I wanted to do a spell to get a certain amount of success that I think will bring me fulfillment or put bringing me to a person that I think will bring me fulfillment and then it doesn't. And that's the cost of it sometimes is, you know, I'm like, why is my soul not fulfilled if I'm gaining material attainment? And that takes you to kind of to the next level of magic, which would be Kabbalah and the tree of life consciousness, but exactly that. And I've seen costs in the earlier days for sure. Like people can get hurt, you know, people, but you will still get what you want, but crazy chaos can happen. Yeah. And and I think it takes a lot of tools and will to handle that, those those trials. Because if you're not, you're just going to implode. Is there a certain type that, that the cost is greater or is it dissipate? Is there less cost as you go along? Or is there any kind of thing sure. like that? For sure. If you're doing magic for to feed your ego. Yeah. that's, yeah. that's, that's what I've learned. Yeah. The darkest type of magic is if yeah. you're, if you're, if you're, 
if you're getting magical thing, if you're trying to attain things for your just yourself and you don't want to share it and you're, you don't have any intention to um, share what you attain with others or any type of will to facilitate other people and you're just doing it for me, 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 I'm going to live in my mental throne of my pageant, my, my, my magic and my power. Well, you're fucked. You're the entities, the chaos. I mean, the demonic entities will fuck with you for sure because e- feeding your ego is 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 an endless. Sa- it's you can't satiate it. No. It's endless. Yeah, your ego probably doesn't have your best interest at heart most of the time. It thinks it does, and everyone thinks that your ego is like that guy who thinks you're the best and thinks you're the toughest or thinks you're the smartest. Half the time, that's not your ego. Half the time, that ego saying, you can't fucking play that song, you loser. Don't even bother picking up the guitar. You know, you're know, you never going to figure that out. Just go sit on the couch and watch fucking Netflix. That's your yeah, ego, exactly. too. Yeah, no, no, no. E- ego is, the ego is very sick and deceptive and negative because it's about the uh, – it's about your attachment to your identity and, and it's, and it's so full of fear. It will just generate fear. It's shame FM, you know, it's just fear. (laughs) And, and, and that's why mastering the ego is how you can get to your goals because I think, and, and achieve your goals because the ego is this enemy, this voice, because so many people believe that first thought from the ego of I'm not going to pick up the guitar. And then there goes all that talent. You know what I mean? But if they're just like, Hey, ego, I'm watching you, but I have divine will. I have my soul's will. I'm going to actually bypass you, you motherfucker, and I'm going to do this. You can do it. I've seen it happen in my own life. I've been plagued by self-doubt in certain scenarios, and I've seen negative thought patterns appear before good things could happen for me. And I, because I just tried to change the way that I related to myself. And I was just like, you know what? Just, it's just music in the background. It's just music. I'm not listening to you. Fuck you. And it, and it's, and it's, it's uncomfortable. It's discomfort. And I was just like, you know what? And I saw that. And also the ego lies to you. It's just usually cognitive distortions. Like nothing you, you think of in your ego is real. <laughs> I find it helps to give a name. I named him yeah. Frank. Sometimes what? Frank has good ideas. Usually Frank's an idiot. <laughs> That's fucking sick. Yeah. But when no, you exactly. can when you can think, fuck Frank, it helps. I think I got it from the Untethered Soul. Oh, I don't know. It's one of the first time hearing of this. It's one of these books I read that just give those start giving those voices in your head a name, and then they'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's epic. No, that's real. That's real magic right there. It's just like just organize it you know say it's an entity say it's like this evil voice or not well not even evil or just a loser or just somebody you don't you wouldn't listen to just be like who the fuck is this guy i'm not listening to you and then that way you get to hear your own voice your own consciousness yeah Yeah. and and it feels different because you're like in control of your life that way but i think depression and ocd and all this type of stuff and all these cognitive distortions and even personality disorders are symptoms of the ego Hmm, interesting did you do you still have sleep paralysis uh, happen at all, or did you do anything to actually like get rid of that? Well, it actually started to happen when I was talking to Manson a lot, which was really freaking me oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> and and there were a lot of paranormal experiences where I would be like asleep, and I would wake up at three a.m. and my phone would be on silent, and then he would text me and be like, "Wake up," and I'd be like, "What?" Like like you know like I'm not saying he did mad he was doing magic on me at some point or that he had some type of control in my head or any of that stuff but a lot of people say he's a haunted person and um that was was weird you know anytime i would engage with him a lot of paranormal activity would happen or i would get sleep paralysis and i think but um the sleep paralysis stopped when i started to get away from my addiction oh and okay went into recovery actually it's awesome. like i haven't had it since since a long time you've yeah. had it right uh no no no, just oh, wow. friend, my girlfriend has quite a bit. And, oh, wow. uh, yeah, my girlfriend and, uh, and other people, psychological, other people I know. No, I, I think it's deeper than that. I mean, the, the only time I, we were able to deal with that, we, we got rid of it so, so far, it seems is through like protection magic, like the actual oh, yeah. time, the actual time that she was being attacked. And I did that. It made the guy disappear. Like the shadow demon whatever it was like fucking like he didn't he left the only time he's ever left like so it happened twice where 
we were in long distance. Like she was away from me at the time. And I did that. And, uh, both times, like one time he started like laughing and he couldn't, uh, he couldn't do anything and, and turned around and left. So it is really strange that the, yeah. Yeah, no, that that's definitely, definitely a thing. And, and I also always hear stories about people doing protection spells and, and then sleep paralysis stopping. And, um, yeah. Did you use like salt or? No, just, it was kind of more of a, uh, a sigil kind of ritual type thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. Is that your favorite form of magic? Uh, no, not really. I like it, but I, I don't really do it very often. Just, uh, I've been just trying to sort of meditate, do some more deeper, uh, intention work and that kind of stuff lately. Yeah. So you mentioned, do you think it's psychological? Uh, yeah. I had that question because, I mean, I go back and forth on whether it's all fucking psychological because the nature yeah, of reality, yeah. reality is pretty thin and I, that relates to magic and does it work that way? Because, I mean, that's the whole Scott Adams side of thing and he's, you know, Scott Adams is Scott Adams. But, I mean, he's got a lot of great stuff out there that r directly relates to manifestation and magic. And his whole idea of it is that it's all simulation and it's more like hacking than magic. See, I also talk about that theory in, in, in my, my book my, also, because I also have thought the exact same thoughts that you just said. Like, am I just mesmerizing myself into a certain state where, you know, if you're doing, um, I'm doing, if you're, some people do like charm spells where they're, they're trying to like boost their sexual charm and then they go out and then they notice you know, more people looking at them. But is that because subconsciously you did the spell, you willed yourself into that hypnosis, and then you started to notice people looking at you more, which would be exactly what you're saying, hacking reality. So in a weird way, in both, it works. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it fucking yeah. works. So if it's getting the job done, if it's psychological, if it's metaphysical, that's the type of magic that I think should exist is, and that's why I think we should keep practicing it as people because we need to learn what the fuck is this, you know? I agree. My question is more, is magic working because it's all like, it's all psychological. Oh, like reality is reality. Psychological? Reality. Oh, is, like, like our interpretation of reality. Yeah, It's like, well, no, like, like we're all sort of, co-creating a reality that isn't actually physical. Oh, that's sick. Because this yeah. is all <laughs> empty space. It's all empty space, but it's all here and there's, you know, walls and shit. And we all sort of agree on that. But okay. at the end of the day, it's all empty space and it's all fields and none of nothing's really here. So mm. is, is it, are we, so are we actually in some so more sort consciousness of, is, as opposed to psychological? You mean, well, maybe, yeah. Consciousness is, yeah. It's more consciousness than psychological, but <clears throat> the same thing sort of, you know, my beliefs directly affect my reality. So believing in magic makes ma magic possible. If you don't believe in magic and you're going to try it out anyway, it's not going to work because See. your fucking reality is based on you. See, I, I also agree with that. I think there's a sense of holographic virtualness to reality. And I think the fact that virtual reality and people existing in, in these worlds where, you know, there's some teenagers today who don't even have friends in person. All their friends are from TikTok and Instagram and Twitter, you know, and <laughs> and, you know, would we say that they're not in reality or are they in their reality where their reality literally exists on a screen, you know, and I that we could argue that about our own reality. Like, is this all just holographic? And did I fucking create this in my head? And is this why I'm here? And is this, you know, all that, that kind of stuff, because what your, your theory would argue that we're constantly creating reality in our head because it's, because it's virtual. Yes. We and are you, something. You believe that. Yeah. Well, I think I come some, uh, my personal beliefs are kind of fucking weird, but, you know, I think it's sort of, sort of some. And these are new. These are fairly new beliefs. Like you're not you co haven't always co been co created conscious, co created reality. That we're co creating reality. That uh, we probably come from some sort of group consciousness. 
that is sort yes. of individualized itself so that the universe can experience itself through our ex- individual experiences, but we're actually not individuals. We're one. Wow. Yeah, kind of like that's... ants. And when you die, you're going to go back to that. I don't know if we're one, one, or if it's like a soul group thing or how reincarnation fits into it. But more and more, I think it's like when you check out of this motherfucker, it's like back to source. That's so interesting. There's something in Kabbalah called Ein Sof, which exactly is just what you said, is that we're all stripped from the exact same cloth and we're all just a group soul and we're all just a group consciousness and we're all, we just all exist as um, mirrors to each other and we're just souls orbiting around each other. Well, that's how that shit works. Like anytime someone's really triggering you, you should probably go do some journaling. Because you're fucking <laughs> noticing your reflection in a mirror most of the time. Oh, a hundred percent. Anytime I have like a high emotional reaction to something, I'm like, oh, that's me that I'm reacting to. Totally. You know, I'm just, re- I'm reacting to, a, uh, and, and you know, those people, like you said, people who like to play the victim or people we, we're, we're such in a culture of victim consciousness, you know? And I think it's very difficult because of course, as human beings with empathy, we can see that, that, you know, people experience victimizations, you know what I mean? And, and everyone has pain and suffering and trauma, but the kind of victimization consciousness that we're seeing in our culture, where it's like, everyone care about what I went through, you know what I mean? Or everyone, everyone listen to, to my, my problems and my trauma, because that, and, and, and for that reason, I need to dictate another person's reality. Like they put a trigger warning on Clueless in some universities. <laughs> Clueless yeah. got a trigger warning. Yeah. So you know that that, but you know that identity politics fucking black hole is, is you know dark too and a dark magic in itself. Well, yeah, but I mean, I was kind of going to ask about Darren's theory and your theory about. So is everybody's perception and intention then? mixed with each other and something is created out of that. Like, cause it's, it's not just my will and my intention that creates my reality. Cause it's so here's, I'm, like our auras are interacting yeah. right now. So. so as I understand it <clears throat> and I don't know, fuck all, but fuck all. But so you can, if this is why manifestation is, is sort of the key to the thing, because this is why you can manifest. So I can't, I can't man. I can't create my reality in such a way that it's going to start screwing up your version of reality. So I can't start flying or I can't start, you know, changing shapes or stuff like that. I can create a company to employ a hundred thousand people or something down the way and I can affect their reality that way. Or I can, so anything that's within myself, my own sphere, that's what I've got influence on. So your own drive, your own ideas, your own things, anything you want to get in that starts cre- affecting other people's reality. Now, I mean, there's room for, there's probably room for yeah, Reiki and all that room, down well, the line, of, well. line eventually. But I just, that's where the sort of boundary is. I think there's some sort of boundary that my, my bubble can't grow into your bubble. It can't envelop your well, bubble. Unless my, my bubble reality. is, unless my bubble is actually like tainted or open to influence. I mean, you know, I mean, you got to And then what no, if, what if people are advanced, like, advanced spiritually? Well, they can, they can manifest sure. levitation or they can, maybe. they can change physical aspects of their being. I mean, maybe for them, but not for, they can't make you fly. Right. Right. Yeah. And I'm even, so even making me fly seems a little bit out there. Like I really think it's a personal thing. You can affect your reality, but it can't start going against everyone else's like you're not special. You can't just change reality and all these other million people are like, how do you do that? It's got to be done in such a way that fits within all the algos. Whoa. The algos are probably racist. So hard. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, that's, that's really, I mean, everything you just spit was true. Like that, that I agree. I agree with that. I think, and I I like think that's you, also di- directly, that's directly connected to magic also. And probably why it works is for that reason, but, because but it's our reality we're affecting. But there is like, if you were mainstream media and you were with another group of mainstream media and you're spouting lies, you are affecting other people's reality. Like there is a, there's a dark magic or also. a dark, like there's a dark thing going on with 
mainstream mainstream culture and you're affecting their subconscious or their consciousness so that they can then affect their own reality oh boom that's that's true that's true that's true so it's like free will yeah you still got free will me and you could be watching so the, me and you could be at home watching cnn right now too but we're not because we have the free yeah. will to decide yeah to yeah do that. yeah no no that's yeah. that's that was so fucking true it's the it's the point it's because they're planting the subconscious seeds to then make you watch to make you interpret your reality so has have you ever done like a deep dive on the fucking news cycle against the moon phases i wonder if there's a cycle yeah i wonder if they're doing fucking magic through the media in cycle with the moon oh uh you there was an announcement in vancouver about ride share on a full moon that I found to be really weird and it was <laughs> random and they just did it. So that that's one time I've seen that. Yeah. 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 I, but, yeah. but, um, I, I would, I would probably, yeah, no, I, everyone in Hollywood and corporations are doing magic. I mean, there's been people I've met celebrities, people who you would never think are doing magic, but they, they say, we don't talk about this. We're not supposed to talk about this. Why are you talking about this? I think Grimes and Elon Musk do magic, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and I don't think Grimes does good magic. And, and hey, um, there's I, only one Grimes think, around here. What? There's only one Grimes around here. Yeah, yeah, very true. Um, but yeah, I think uh, I think I think exactly. I think yeah, no, I think there are corporations and people who are attuned to the moon phases and do things attuned to the moon phases. People hire astrologers. I mean, Kabbalah, which is so famously connected to celebrities and CEOs and Hollywood and all that stuff is at baseline magic. It's literally just magic with a K. And, um, I think, you know, when, when that started to happen in our culture, that was just everyone doing magic. But, uh, yeah. Well, who's, who's the billionaire that said, was it uh, Buffett or whatever that said billionaires or astrologists or use astrologists, but not millionaires or something like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Millionaires don't do astrology, only billionaires. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I mean, let's be honest. These fucking crazy assholes are doing some crazy ritual shit. I mean, they're doing it at CERN. I mean, they open up the new CERN experiment and there's some shit going on that I'm Hello? like, what in the fuck is happening? Oh, we're back. No, I had to go. I had to mention CERN. Oh, sorry. Is CERN on the no talk? It's because they caught you. <laughs> Go they caught you just when you were about to say it. They caught you. Go, go, what were you saying? I've never heard well, you talk about Well, didn't you see that? Before. Like, you, well, I see you see it all the time whenever they're like opening a new this yeah, or yeah, new yeah, that. The yeah. videos are flying around, and yeah. the CERN was one. Yeah. I forget what it was at CERN, but they're, they're dressed up as fucking parrots and they're doing all this crazy stuff. And it's like, there's no way that's not a ritual. Like, yeah. you, what, you guys just dream this up? This is like your cheer? <laughs> Come on. And it's everywhere. Did you guys ever know about Sanctum, the sex Illuminati uh, sex club that was in Hollywood and like Bill Maher and all these people were connected to it, SNCTM? It was like a sex magic club for the elite. So yeah, I heard a little bit about that, yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. And, and even like, what's the other one where Alex Jones infiltrated? What the, what are they doing out there? Seems fucking weird. They're oh, dressed Bohemian up as Grove? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So is it falling apart though? Like the like the, the celebrity the, culture, the pop culture, the you know, it's it's getting to the point where people are craving real conversation. I think, and all this f- sort of fakeness, the ads, the the faux outrage, the virtue signaling. I feel like it's starting to backfire. Yeah, it is starting to backfire, and I and I don't think you know the answer is the identity politics reaction faux faux because there's there's also like a faux outrage to to the outrage also you know yeah and i think like you know like jordan peterson and those types you know i think it those type of people can actually be kind of dangerous for society because i think they replace a higher power for certain people who are powerless and young and they look like you go to a fucking jordan peterson show it's like a scientology thing it's like david miscavige you know like it, it really feels that way people like stand and applaud i read the fucking book it's just self-help he's just saying basic (laughs) shit you know what i mean like i don't think everything about him is so great but we 
worship him and you know as this like god and and men worship him as this god and and who's teaching you to undo from feminism and identity politics and 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 you know fuck fuck liberals and all this stuff but it's just it's just as another black hole of of magic you know i think it's another way of hypnotizing people um and i i think thought leaders are very dangerous it, yeah. honestly in yeah. our culture influencers that's what it is called these days yeah influencers fuck influencers yeah it's 100%. yeah yeah be aware yeah be aware of that stuff watch out for that the pendulum swings both ways and either side of that pendulum is probably a dangerous place to this be this huh? is why you gotta support the show america.ca slash support so that people can be watching content like this instead of these other fucking influencers <laughs> trying to steal your magic <laughs> hundred percent. And I think, I think these type of spaces are what should be on when everyone's watching CNN. Can you imagine how different the world would be if people were watching this instead of CNN? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, you can get a glimpse of that. If you head into the chats, America.ca slash chats, we got about 600 people in there, uh, living a different life. We've started a commune. Didn't you say you're not far from Washington? Commune's in Washington, just outside of Wenatchee. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm in Vancouver, so. We're yeah, going, yeah, when we go down there, and come down and do a little, quest. like, we'll have you there for a weekend, do a little seminar, a little uh, workshop with us. <laughs> yeah, well, that would be really cool. We're yeah. doing a vision quest on March 21st, and I think we're doing something else June 13th. Not a, like, not a real, well, yeah, kind of. Well, so, yeah, we're eating a bunch 13th. of mushrooms and having some visions. Yeah. You're chaperoning this event. Time. What signs are you guys? I'm, I'm a, a cancer. I'm a Pisces. Oh shit! I'm a cancer. Oh yeah. And that's crazy. You, so we're all water signs. <laughs> cancer's a water sign. Yes. Of course. <laughs> I mean, of course, sensitive it is. Sign that. <laughs> the cancer's the, the most that, sensitive sign. Yeah. I thought Pisces was the most sensitive sign. Well, P- Pisces, Pisces is sensitive. Also, cancers feel things that aren't real. They have like paranoia and, and, and distortions and. They have to sort through their feelings and anxieties of things that aren't real to get to their real feelings. And they also believe in like, I'm going to give away so much of my love to everyone, but like, then I'm going to play the victim about it. And oh. be like, no one cares <laughs> about me. No oh. one cares. Wow. But Pisces, Pisces is, well, all the shit you just spit was very Pisces. Pisces are on another level. Have you astral projected? Uh, I might accidentally ask projected last time I smoked DMT. Well, there you go. It's tough to say. I, I'm not, I'm not good at that kind of stuff. Like I, I, after my, my, my couple DMT sessions, I got into meditating for a while, but my life's so fucking busy. I slipped out of it again and I'm just, I'm always chasing something down. The weed might you block the, the weed might block the astral projection too a little bit. Could be. You yeah. got to track it. If you if you get like an app where you like see the the squares of like oh, I did meditation today and like the dope you have to hack the dopamine in your brain like you mm-hmm. can create augmented reality games for your goals in your life. That's what I'm doing right now by learning French. I'm on a 47 day streak and it's like I can't fuck this up. So I no. so I I do my 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day, 20 minutes a day. Yeah, and like that's what it is. Now it's like a little like, dopamine hit when I hit my little thing for the day. Ding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, like, it's a like a little it's rat like a in the maze. It's like a video game. It's like Zelda. Yeah, totally. I should get the water drinking one and the astral projecting one and my life will be set. There you go. You just have to, because when we're playing video games, right, we're, 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 we, we hook ourselves onto the levels and all that stuff, but life is a video game. There are levels, you know, a gatekeeper is just like a, a villain boss that you need to defeat. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> yeah. there's you just different tactics to get to the things that you want. I completely use the video game tactic of augmented reality. I mean, when all those kids were playing Pokemon go and augmented reality was becoming cool, that was also very scary. That was like watching like a, yeah, like yeah, a, totally like a brainwash programming with everyone who played Pokemon go. I was like, what the fuck is this? I never touched that. I was like, you guys have all lost it. Um, you can use augmented reality for a positive thing. Like I would create like for finishing each chapter of my book, I would fit, create like a fake reward that I, I that I would pretend to, that I would get after and, and and it would push me because I was in the reality and believing that I was going to get that reward and all that kind of stuff. I think people 
I mean, that's just basically like NLP, nor- neuroassociative conditioning. That's like magic also. Yeah. Yeah. Therapy is magic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right on. So what else is there that you want to mention before we uh, wrap this thing up? You know what the interesting um, about therapy being magic is? Is that it's really just the conversation that seems it's the words that are the magic. Yeah. You just need that therapist there because you don't fucking trust any of your friends enough to say that shit to them, <laughs> which is a crime. Well, it's, it's, it's true. I mean, that's one of the reasons why the recovery if community you had, works too, because you start confiding each other and, and you're able to use yeah. each other in that way a little if bit. If we all had real intimate relationships with our peers, then no one would have to pay therapists to listen to their problems. Yeah, because everything's so superficial, superficial and vapid. I mean, if I would say anything to your audience, I would say question everything. Every like, you program yourself from anything that everyone else is doing, and if there's something that everyone else is doing that doesn't feel right for you, trust that instinct and do what feels right for you. Try to be open to learn magic and try to create more of a relationship to the upper worlds because it's your innate birthright to have that and um, create some cool shit in the world. You know, have try to have fun in the process of it and pretty please buy my book. Yeah. And read pop, <laughs> read pop magic. Is that Spot shit out on audio? Yeah, yeah, it's it was it's a great it's a great handbook to have for all this. I mean, you go through all the little chapters. Of, is of is all it out on audio yet? We're, it's coming on audio. It's we got one on of audio. the best I narrators actually, in the country yeah. here no, for hire. Yeah. No. Well, I actually, I actually, someone people were like auditioning to like use my wow. voice in the, in the book. Yeah, it was fascinating. That's fantastic. So I, I hope the guy we got is locked down. But yeah, I know you guys you guys have great voices. Well, I think uh, I'm going to get your email address because I think me and you need to chat again. I'm going to shoot you yeah, an email. Sure. I also got another show I want to get you on, uh, so I'll email cool. you about that. But, yeah, um, man, what a great chat. Yeah, Are you on fantastic. social media or anything like that? Yeah, where no, should people no, go no, to no, get – No social media for me. Fantastic. I love it. Where should people go want... to get – where should they go to get your book? Uh, any Everywhere books are sold, buy it on Amazon Prime so you can get it on Fuck February Amazon. 18th. Oh, well, yeah, you know, fuck okay, Amazon also, but <laughs> go to Chapters if you're in Canada. That's sick. Um, support Canadian when, stores. I mean, wherever books are sold, just okay. buy the book. Cool. When's it coming out? February 18th. February 18th. What is it today? The 12th. Today's so, the Okay, 12th. in six days. So, so this will probably, be, there, yeah, this will probably be coming out on maybe Friday. So it'll be a few days after the release. So good timing. Oh, sick! Wow, yeah. yeah. So this, so the podcast will drop next Friday. Yeah, this, this Friday. Probably, this yeah. Friday. Yeah. Usually we oh, have usually we have more in the can, but uh, you're We've like out lazy. next. Yeah. Wow. So, we weren't supposed to be this be tight because this and... was supposed to happen on Saturday. Yeah. But oh no, this wasn't this one. This was yeah, the next yeah, one we're doing. Yeah. 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 We had, we've been having some technical problems like a motherfucker, but I think we got them sorted out. Mercury, Mercury. Oh, is that yes, motherfucker Mercury. retrogating again? Is that all it does? <laughs> yep. Yep. Is that like half the time it's retrograding and half the time it's not? Retrograde, man. This shit's real. I'm coming around. <laughs> I'm coming around. You're, you're, you're coming around with a lot of stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Reach around. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for coming on the show, Alex. Uh, come back anytime. Yeah, this is fantastic. We got people in the chat saying thanks, this is one of the best ever. So Awesome. Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much. Fantastic. Bro. Thank you guys so okay. much for everything. And thank you for what you guys do with your show. I'm really grateful to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Alex. Have a Take great care. night, sir. <laughs> All right. That was our chat with Alex Kazemi. Pop Magic. I know, I, know I recommend a lot of the books that we read here, but this was good. It was an awesome read. I didn't Especially even if you're know into magic, what but. it was going to be about. I had yeah. no idea what to expect. I know. I like I mean, that. I like I that. Like, actually, it's. Ooh. I run my whole like thing just on the calendar description. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know, and I a lot of times I don't put a lot in there because yeah. I so I'm like pop magic. I'm like, what, what is the it? fuck does that is mean? Is it like yeah. a pop up book? <laughs> 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 it didn't even. I didn't even think pop culture did not even uh, cross my mind. Yeah, he talks about like types of spells and rituals: candle magic, sigil magic, elemental magic, sex magic. Love and sex magic alchemy, charging items, protection rituals, purification, entities, black magic, all that kind of stuff. It's awesome. And 
good chapter in meditation and speaking of magic the mag america support magic america.ca slash support where your magical support dollars help us keep this show going help us keep the bills paid we've been doing it for coming up on seven years now we've managed to keep this value for value model going where we do all this stuff and release it all for free And if you guys find some value with the product and all the interviews, I think this will be number 403. Um, You know, you head over to grandamerica.ca slash support and you sign up for a monthly via Patreon, PayPal, Stripe, do a one-time donation. I will say there's been uh, uh, three or four one-time donations this week. Awesome. Thanks. Those are a huge help. Oh, yeah. It's a huge help. bank account a little bit. Um, So, yeah, uh, grandamerica.ca slash support, whatever you can do over there. Uh, to help, it helps. Of course, check out the show notes. Everything in the show notes supports the show to some level as well. There's a bunch of stuff you can do there. Uh, review the show, share the show, tell your friends about this motherfucker. Email Graham. Email Graham, spam Graham, Graham at America.com. Give us some content for the show. You can mail stuff to the P.O. box. Anything. Share us on social media. Follow us on Facebook. All that stuff helps. Uh, support helps most of all. GrahamAmerica.ca slash support. And we love you for it. You guys are the best. You got the best listeners in the business. Uh, yeah. So big thanks to Alex for coming on the show. I feel like I'm I'm not done talking to Alex. I feel like yeah. I know that's weird. It's not again. very often you just throw out yeah. the like I'm gonna email you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Thanks for listening, and we will see you next week.
place to be. I won't cry miracle. The maple syrup is the best. It's so yeah. good, though. I won't cry. Just be present with me and love me. I won't cry miracle. Wow. 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 When they started doing this weird hello. Hey Grand Americans, that's the way you do it. Listen to Grand America on the World Wide Web. Hey Grand Americans, that's the way you do it. Donate to Grand America on the World Wide Web. Hey Grand Americans. That's the way you do it. Money for something good. Vibes for free. Because without support, it all comes to a grinding halt. So keep lubing the system with your support dollars. Go to america.ca slash support. Touch it and feel it. Let, let meditate with it on mushrooms. Like, do a whole spiritual thing with it. See what happens. You could uh, smudge it. Oh, it smells. You can't. It smells. It's a f- No, your energy body's always with you, though. It's, it's, it's around me. It's my aura that's around me now. It's interloping and overlapping with your aura. Keep your fucking energy being off of it. All right? You're making it weird. Okay, whatever. Just be present with me and love me. Just keep your energy body off my energy body and we'll be fine. There's no overlapping. <laughs> interloping. There's no interloping. <laughs> I might use the wrong word there. <laughs> uh, long day in the studio. Yeah, long day. Be nice to Graham. He's sensitive. <laughs> that's that's the one that got read to me when somebody fell in the pool. <laughs> I'm more sensitive than I let on. <laughs> Most people are. Graham lets on a lot, so that's why we know he's there's a lot under this, a lot of iceberg underneath. A lot of steam puff on it. Steam puff and ice stuff. stuff. Yeah. Cool. Okay, okay, that's, that's fine. It. That's our only rule in grammar. There's more rules than that, and I make them up as I go, so get used to it. <laughs> oh, look at that. It's disgusting. It's a half of a skull. And it smells. It's all dirty. I don't think you need all this technology. If it's consciousness, then maybe, you know, I can go to wherever I need to go in a fucking trash can if I can get my head straight. They changed their whole their whole meow and they started doing this weird, hello. <laughs> Take it easy. It's not quite like that. Did they say hello? Hello. They do. <laughs> There's a jingle. There's a jingle waiting to happen. The unique snowflake. It's all triangles. One day we'll be selling muffin cookbooks for 150 bucks a piece on some separate entity so that we can get paid for Grimerica, and that'll be like the thing. Head to suziesmuffins.com and buy a book if you want to support the show. <laughs>